come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Hey, We're coming at you from places unknown, a dank, dark basement. We're going to talk about movies that are chosen. It's, uh, it's your house. We, we know. Well, it is, it is pretty dank it was and pretty dark. Mm-hmm. So and it is a basement. It, all of these things <laughs> all are true. These things. Uh, so, hey, before we get into this, why don't you do us a favor? Zip on over to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, wherever you found us. Give us a like or a star rating or hit the subscribe button. All of these things help us get found by other folks like you. And we want to branch out and grow the roots of the Freak Show family tree. I like that imagery. Hmm. Of course, it's growing in a cemetery. Yeah. Reaching oh, down into the yeah. coffins. And, okay. Oh. Is that cool Ooh. green lights shining upon <laughs> I, I think it I should. Feel like this is Fog like, rolling in. I feel like it's story time with Uncle Colin. Uh, yeah. I like, Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm down for this story. I'm in. Well, you know, I'm Uncle Colin. Who else are the internet <laughs> no, radio no, superstars? Too I'm Sean. Just Hol- plain Sean. <laughs> Holly. Michaela. And uh, tonight we went on a freak show field trip. Uh, something out of the ordinary. To partake in the big horror event of the year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We watched uh, the new Halloween film. I think we did this last year with It. We did. We, we did. did. The bank did. Yeah. Well, we did this because, uh, I mean, I assume all of us, Holly, I assume you're on this boat. We're rabid, diehard Halloween movie fanatics. Some of us maybe more than others. I don't know if that's true. You know, it's like, I think I am a diehard Halloween movie fanatic. <laughs> I've just been uh, tempered by uh, experience. How many uh, Halloween twos have there been? Three. Well, okay, let's go with, let's, let's do that. Like, how, how many direct sequels to the first movie have there been? Two. Two. Are we on this three? Is no, this, is this is the third one. This is the third one. Direct sequels to the first one? Yeah. This yeah. Is the so third this one. one, everybody knows this who's listening to this podcast, but they basically have retconned the entire series by throwing everything out and saying that this is a direct sequel to the 1978 original film. Right. And they had the uh, gall to call it Halloween. Which is the third movie in <laughs> 40 years Halloween to be called Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. yeah. But at least the Rob Zombie one got away with it because it was a remake. Yeah, exactly. And it is still, it's just known as Rob Zombie's Halloween. Yeah. 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 So, so now we have to us. call it Halloween 78, mm-hmm. which I hate that. I hate that we're, this is what they do. I, no, I just do Halloween and Halloween 2018. Okay. Right. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Halloween. Okay, so I mean, do we just get right into it? Are we breaking this down, or how do you guys want to do this? We should say spoilers oh, yeah. ahead. That's a right, lot definitely. of spoilers. It's going to be a very be open discussion. Yeah. So, yep. I We're mean, gonna... by the time they're hearing this, it'll be a week old. That's still mm-hmm. new for people who aren't like us. Yeah. We're so weird. yeah, yeah warning. But the people who listen to are like us. So, right, yeah, but some. But just in case like you there. found this podcast because uh, you were searching for you know a Halloween. review of Halloween 2018, yeah. we are going to discuss uh, uh, the details of mm-hmm. the film. Mm-hmm. All right, so here we go. So the movie starts off with uh, a scene, and I'm, or we're not going to go through every scene of it. Uh, but I'm curious what you guys thought of the opening of this movie, which is now it's 40 years after the conclusion of the last movie. Michael Myers is incarcerated. Uh, presumably in a scene that we didn't actually get to see from the end of the first movie where he goes off the balcony and now he's been in uh, an institution at Smith's Groves for 40 years. Yeah. Uh, and a podcast team. Uh, oh, I loved journalists. that. I loved that it was a podcast specifically. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, damn, I relate to this. God damn it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I like how the, uh, the uh, what was her name? Don, Donna? I think it was Donna. Dana. 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 Dana was like uh, he's like we're, we he, he was almost embarrassed to say podcast yeah when he's talking to Lori on the intercom he's like we we're doing a podcast and she's <laughs> like we're investigative journalists <laughs> <laughs> but that is but like true crime podcasts are having such a moment like, right well I, yeah. I, I I can't even say right now because it's been going on like four or five years now the true crime podcasts yeah. are like print money basically at this point yeah. Yeah. so I was like. Uh, I did have a moment of being like, okay, that does make sense. But I was also like, is that going to be like danger attainment in the future? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's and, what I was worried about. I was like, and, oh, uh, don't you say remember podcast. Howard Stern yeah. when he was a thing and they incorporated yeah. him into or, or the, the shock, shock D- yeah. DJ uh-huh. into Halloween six. Yeah. That's, that, I was sitting there thinking that the whole time. I was I'm like, like, Ooh, that's danger attainment. Uh-huh. Like, like, They're doing shock. it again. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. But, like, Halloween. I it, but I think the humility <laughs> to it like helps a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. like, 
I well, don't know. Those characters are in this movie so little it doesn't even matter. Are they? they? Yeah. Are they? they? More than they, I thought they'd be. Well, about what I thought they'd be. They, die, they don't have that much screen time. They die pretty quickly. But you They asked, have a lot of screen time, I thought. For the, the 40 fucking characters that are in this movie. Yeah. They, <laughs> they don't like, make it out of the first act. Are you sure? Or maybe. The they're, gas they're station? Like, end of first act. It's basically. Yeah. Well, they take they up. It seems like they took up a considerable amount of time in the first act where I'm like, I know that, you know, just by the logic of how these movies work, they're going to ser- serve the purpose of handing Michael Myers his mask because he's yeah. got to get the mask mm-hmm. from somewhere. Right. Why does this guy like have to have that mask? Because it's he's trying to de- it's a sh- show of legitimacy to Michael, right? You know, they're like, trying to get a reaction. Out. Yeah, that seems like to, mm-hmm. for anybody who's going and investigating this, everyone's trying to get a reaction out of Michael, a man who has not spoken a word in 40 years. Yeah. Everyone's trying mm-hmm. to get a reaction out of this. Yeah. Guy. What better way to get a reaction out of him? Let me ask you this then. Well, Is I want to it... answer your first question. OK. You, you asked, how do we feel about the beginning of this movie? Mm-hmm. Um, now, I'm sure they went and thought through every different way they could have started this movie, considering, you know, do we start right at the end of the first one? There actually was a this? different Sure. Intro shot. I mean, there was also like they were going to show. It was written that they were going to show the death of Loomis. Yeah, they were going to recreate the original ending, Mm -hmm. right? And with a body double or something, right? And And have him get killed, and not and not shoot Michael off the balcony. Like Mm -hmm. Laurie was going to end up shooting him off. Mm -hmm. Now, while I don't want that, because that I no thank you. um, I think some sort of continuation from the first to this one would have helped. Because we get such, uh, we get that ending of the first one, and then he's just, oh no, he was caught. Like it kind of demystifies the end of the first one a little bit. I would have taken something. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can just, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it could be, but I think it could be something along the lines of, you know, when he's roaming the alleyways at the beginning of the second one, mm. something like that. And then he gets, you know, he's still injured because he got shot six times and then he does end up getting captured. I would have taken something than how they just went into it for this. It feels like a gap to me, but that's just me. I, I the original intro that I read, I think it was much worse than what we got mm. uh, there. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis was saying it was Andy Maciak, her granddaughter, Allison jogging through like, the neighborhoods of Haddonfield and then goes into her house and like opens the closet and the closet looks just like the one in the original and she pulls like a light bulb and turns it on and like it's pushing her clothes and then it just cuts to Halloween. And I'm like, yeah, that's that way too. worse. That's that. Just, that's like a non sequitur. Like what is yeah. what, What's the yeah. point of the scene? Yeah. That's so I, re- that I, re- I actually, I found the intro to be incredibly stressful to watch um, when like they're holding the mask up and all the other inmates are kind of like losing their shit mm-hmm. and he's so. like screaming at him and then it just cuts straight to yeah. the title sequence it I found that abrupt. to be really jarring yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. which is I'm hoping what they were going for it feels like they were mm-hmm. it was right. abrupt yeah. but I guess I didn't take it as like I mean you know because they're, they're going for something like uh, a David Lynchian kind of you know all the inmates start to react I guess what yeah. was happening in this opening scene the they present uh, the mask to Michael Myers, they show it to his back and like, can't you feel it, Michael? You can feel the mask. And apparently like there's a ripple of some kind of energy throughout this entire right. courtyard well, as all the inmates start yammering. And yapping. I was thinking about that, but my theory was more that they have a strange person coming into their mental hospital yelling at someone. I think I, that's what they were I agree reacting with that. to more yeah. than anything. I, I agree with that. I, I, I felt like they were more. They were not reacting to Michael. They were reacting to the the journalist. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. He's Everyone screaming at him. Yeah. yeah, and like, how often do they get people come in this place ever? Just, yeah, you know, and just start yelling. Yeah. Did you feel it was too much? Yeah, I thought it was too much. Yeah, it's too much. I thought it was too much. It's and too then much. when it's it like smashed, evil. Cut, yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just like, yeah. whoa, let's no, go. And when down it did the smash cut, they're podcast to the... journalists. Have you yeah. listened to any like true crime podcast? They do nothing but instigate people. Yeah, right, and that's. That was my other problem. I, I, th- I wrote it down in my notes. I'm like, they have no bedside manner. Like, they go into Lori just fucking asking Barb questions. Let's talk about when you got your daughter taken away from you. And that's yeah. basically I feel like how I've listened to so many podcasts that, like that, that though, yeah, you know? No, that's, that's, that's a very common tactic for journalism. Yeah. They're yeah. just attacking the person into a reaction. Right. That's very common. Mm-hmm. That's fucking Michael Moore. It, you know, it, like, it, it reminded the, me yeah. of the, the Richard Simmons podcast. When, yeah. Like, like, what, like, you know, when he was missing, like, that guy fucking antagonized the shit out of everyone yes, he, to yes. try and find him. Yes. Yeah. And then just, and like, he antagonized him so much that Richard Simmons had to come out and be like, I'm fine, leave me alone. Right. Like, yeah. so he got what he wanted. 
out eventually from antagonizing everyone. Right. Maybe my experience is different because I don't like listening to those where they're antagonistic and attacking. I like to listen to the ones where they're a little more like no. calm and they're asking questions. No, I agree. It's like, as is far, that right if we talk about this, subject? I agree. As far as like journalism, that's more respectable. That's what I right. want to hear. Right. However, in this case, I think it was appropriate. I don't think you were supposed to like it. I don't, yeah. I don't think so either. Yeah. Well, the movie smash cuts there to the, uh, and I know I'm looking at the time. We can't go through scene by scene in this movie, but just, I was, it's okay. natural. I was appreciative natural. that they, they like brought it. back the pumpkin opening. I, I get the, the idea of like the pumpkins all smashed and rotted and yeah. it kind of, you know, reveals itself. Uh, I actually cried at the title sequence. <laughs> I was just saying, yeah, I was, just saying, I was, I was sitting. This there is what I'm saying, folks. I was die there, hard. I was sitting there in the theater, and as soon as that <clears throat> flashed up and it starts like inflating, like uh, I was like, Michaela's gonna love this. Yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> I was happy because the typeface was the same. Yep. But yeah. like, I at first I was like, oh, and then like it kept going, and I was like, oh my god, oh, this god. is so good. <laughs> and like, yeah, that was the that was like one of the most emotional parts for me was the yeah. fucking title sequence more than anything. Yeah. No, so. I I love it. <laughs> yeah. This that, movie yeah. has brought back John Carpenter and his sons and godson, I, son mm-hmm. and godson, I yeah. think, to do the score. Yep. Um, what do you think about the score? I Not enough. I liked it, but I didn't think it was enough. There was As a lot in, of quiet scenes where okay. it could have used it, I thought. There was. I mean, I think that's, I don't know if he just didn't. There are certain scenes that are just quiet. And just yeah. like, this could use a little something. But other yeah. than that, mm-hmm. what, we, what the score is. I, I liked it a lot. I agree. I, think same, I agree. Really same, great. Yeah. There's some new stuff in there that I absolutely loved. There's mm-hmm. one scene. I think it's when Allison is being uh, after her friend is killed on the yeah. gate. Yeah, that's after, the one that I was like the, tapping my foot. I'm like, this yeah. is actually. I'm like, that's, where's the rest of this? Yeah, right. I want because it's only it's like, called the it's like a it's called the, the shape. Album. Yeah, the shape stalks Allison. Right. Or something yeah. Like that. Fantastic. Yeah. I love that track. Well, that yeah. sounds like you know. I mean, it's John Carpenter's great. band now, right? You yeah. know, he's in a band. He's on tour. He's a rock star. So this is right. him he's and his band getting star. together yeah. and doing the music to the movie. So it's it's very different than the synthesizer stuff that he is known for it, i guess it didn't sound to me like you know i thought they were going to go maybe old school john carpenter mm. but it's like it's the john carpenter who's putting out albums now i love it doing though. Oh, yeah i was album. into it mm-hmm. i actually was like oh i should buy that vinyl today when i was like thinking Kinda, about it i wish it had more of that track i think that track more, yeah, yeah. should have been it should have been longer and should it yeah because yeah. there's a lot of well i've been listening to yeah. the the soundtrack it's on youtube you can find it i yes. know you should mm-hmm. buy it but um while i was watching the movie i sat there and i was like this score is like not really doing anything for me it's you know i hear the halloween theme or the jamie theme or sorry the Lori theme yeah. uh you know the remixes <laughs> there was a couple of things that he was doing with i think it was like maybe bowing a guitar or something whenever that's michael the, would have the mm, brrrm, well he also does that's the mm, sound yeah that comes in that was cool yeah. Um, but I was like, it didn't really impress me until I was listening to it later. And by itself, it's a cool mm-hmm. album score, sure. you know? Yeah. But in the movie, I was like, I wonder what, you know, is like, is this, is it just me? Is it it's not really coming off as like, I expected, you know, when I, when I saw Halloween 2 and it has that, you know, the, the original Halloween 2, when it has that, you know, the deep, you know, brrr, yeah. brrr, you know, it's like that was fucking impressive, and this one was kind of like a milder, like dum 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 dum. Like, yeah, hmm, I thought it'd be like a bigger deal, but you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if this one feels like it's um, feels like it's kind of just it's really pounding along, like it's kind of hitting you a little bit as it goes through the movie. So it's a little, yeah, it's different. I would agree with you that I still liked it. The um the gist of the central gist of the movie, I think. I don't know. You're gonna have to, you know, because central gist, right? I'm saying that I believe that there are too many characters, too many plot lines in this movie. Yes. That they're trying to it was like oh, yeah. we're gonna make a movie about like these teenagers that are being stalked on Halloween night. We're also gonna kind make of. a movie about like uh Lori and the the and the new site the new Loomis, the new psychiatrist and the sheriff. And we're gonna have a movie about the podcasters and we're just kinda like gonna jumble all this up and put it right. together. But you could make a movie out of any one of those three storylines, <laughs> right. it feels mm-hmm. like. Um I would agree. So the but the central I know gist, one we could get rid of real quick. Mm-hmm. Looking Which at one? you, new Loomis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. That I, was my least favorite part of this whole I, movie. I, I, I'm going to go farther than that. I'm going to say I hated that I, part. I hated yeah. it. I, hate, I <laughs> absolutely hated his that His character part. motivation makes zero sense. Zero Wait, sense. up until his twist? 
His no, his twist makes no sense. Right, I think right. I hate the twist. Yeah. I was like, there are so many easier ways to progress the story that make more sense than what they chose yeah. to do. Right, you yeah. Could excise all that. I or, have a theory that they wanted to get her in the back of a cop car with Michael Myers and reverse engineered that I, scene. Yeah, might, I, I, th- think th- right. I think you're absolutely right about that. that also, guy, this guy's well, willing to kill a cop over. Also, he studying caused Michael the Myers? bus crash, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the idea here is that, you know, in the final act, we'll get back to what the gist is movie. <laughs> uh, Maybe someday. In the final act, it's like you have to go from, okay, well, well here's here's the conceit. Uh, Laurie Strode's dealing with PTSD out in the fucking woods somewhere, and Michael Myers is not related to her, right? Right. right. So the movie then, the central thing that it has to do is because basically it has to get these two people together together. The idea that facing off against each other is somehow going to be a cathartic uh, thing for one or both of them, right, right. is the, the idea of the movie. Um, but in order to do that, you have to come up with a new – to do the movie, you have to come up with a new motivation for Michael Myers. Once you've come up with a new motivation for Michael Myers, then you have to figure out, well, how do we get – from him doing his thing mm-hmm. to connect to Laurie. Mm-hmm. And this is where the Satrakian, what the fuck is what Sartarian, it? Sartarian. Sartarian. This is where oh, his Sartarian, plot yeah. line comes in because this is the best way that they came up with. The best. The best way that they <laughs> came they up with to of. join those two plot lines. Yeah. So Woo. let's maybe if we can disassemble this now. What is Michael's new motivation for killing people on Halloween. They say that he was like dormant for so many years and now he's like activated basically. So they say he's like a fucking volcano apparently. Like once it lets out, it just lets out everywhere. He that was, was like, there was a line was. like that. And so I was like, okay, I, that's fine. That works for me. And but he was triggered by the mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By it all being brought But what back. does he want? That's, what did that's he ever want point? in the first place? Like yeah. uh, He has something he wants in the first movie. What? What? Well, his psychology isn't that hard. It's like he's a nutbag. He is fixated on the night that he killed his sister yep. and wants to relive it. He gets out of yeah, the he's, he's going to go back Judith. there. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is like, I'm like, okay, so if you're doing a new movie, like, that's easy. He's trying to relive the murder again because right. he's that's, it's all that's in his head right. is it's him killing night. his sister on Halloween night. Yeah. And he's got to go do it again. But this movie doesn't do that. I have a major problem with him being in the backseat of the cop car with Allison and not taking the opportunity to kill her. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense given what you're just saying the premise of this movie is. is Well, yeah, because the premise is just he's just killing. Yeah. Yeah. So why would he not kill her? her. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And like, I get I get they didn't want him to kill a baby, but he does walk. He thinks about it for a second and then keeps walking past that baby. I was like. Damn, I was kind of hoping he'd kill a baby. Like, just, it was just audible. that would have been like well, he my does. audience was audib- audibly going, "No, yeah. no." <laughs> yeah, it's like how dark Not are the they going to go? But like, he, they he, killed the kid. He, he strangled that kid, kid in the kid. car. Yeah. So yeah. Lumpy, yeah. the kid's name is Lumpy. Why? Well, why not? In the credits. You're in Southern Illinois okay. where all the black sheriffs wear cowboy hats. I'm like, we're, we're in Illinois. It's yeah. Creighton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where where do they I think we that live? I just a choice of <laughs> that. Is, right. Yeah. Well, there is, is that Illinois Milwaukee uh, sheriff. Uh, what's his name? Clark uh, is uh, um, north of us. Uh, that yeah. You know, he wears a yeah. cowboy hat. I thought yeah. that was maybe a yeah. nod to him. But Did you guys <laughs> notice when Lumpy was in the car? That, did you notice know, the song that was on the radio? The, it was the, I wish I had, had you, you all alone. alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only time you hear this in the movie, oh, which it's I have in the a credits huge as well. Yeah, but uh, do you? Here we go. This is my biggest issue with this movie. There are scenes in the trailer that are not in this movie, and that's, I have a huge fucking problem with that's that. Also I'm tired true. of being lied to by movie trailers. Like the, we got rogued one with this fucking movie because it's like, oh, this looks cool. Put it in the trailer. And major like, scenes ah, didn't make the movie. that it's were like, yeah. There there's was a major. Yes. What was um, there's a scene in all the trailers where Lori is in the front yard with Michael and raises a knife to stab him. That's not in this movie at mm, all. That's very um, true. The TV spot I keep seeing over and over again has a bunch of cheerleaders on a car going through a parade through a, down a street in Haddonfield. And they're singing the cheer. We're from oh, Haddonfield. Right, yeah. Couldn't be prouder. Not in this movie at all. Yeah. Didn't you say there was a Haddonfield Memorial Hospital in like the making yeah. or something like that? Yeah, there was an ambulance that you there could see the logo or something. on. More yeah. of that showed up. That didn't. There's mm-hmm. no ambulance. Well, there is. They just never show the ambulance. It's just like the aftermath kind of. There's and also Will Patton in the house. Mm-hmm. Where Michael comes up behind him as he's mm-hmm. trying to go through. Yep, a door. that's true. That's not there. And we one of the first things we ever saw from this movie was that short clip of Jamie Lee Curtis in her yard shooting the mannequin, singing "I Wish I Had You All Alone." Not mm-hmm. in this movie either. Right. And like, granted, Which, some of those are minor scenes, but like. 
apparently there was a whole parade that happened in this movie that got right. cut out. Like, which gives you know, a whole like a more sense of like the town. atmosphere. It gives a little atmosphere to it. One and one of my one of the things the editing of this movie. Oh yeah, I'm not a fan of. Talk to me. Uh, I, it is somebody. I saw somebody online <laughs> describe it as the, it. the breathless editing, and I'm just like nothing breathes in this movie. There's they have the filmmakers have no patience in getting to certain things. Um, it almost feels like, and I, I I do this when I when I edit, and I say I've got something that's I got to fit something into 30 seconds, and it's too long, so I take little bits of each end of the clip and keep trying to smush it together uh, until yeah. it fits in. Kind of feels like what they were doing for this movie. It, there's certain. There's hardly any moments in this movie because it feels like they're rushing to just get things on after the the gas station attack where he goes to get his goes to get his mask and everything. Um, that was just like everything's just like fucking quick. Like this happened. All right. We're automatically right over here. What about the whole motion the detector scene? There was a long time of him standing completely still, not even moving in that scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, well, I felt like the editing in that scene was really well done, actually. I'll tell well, you the that. one that uh, bothered me was um, at the. So Lori uh, takes it upon herself to go get a gun. She's going to drive out because Michael Myers is being transferred from Smith's Grove, of course, on Halloween night because they right. always do that, which, which is a bad idea. Which let's not forget is 150 miles from Haddonfield. They say that in the original movie, which I was keeping in mind. I was like, okay, all right. So where's this bus, where's this bus crash happening well, then? But she is totally pulling a Bruce Wayne here where she is going to kill the motherfucker who has poisoned her whole life and yeah. she's going to go shoot him as he's coming out of the, uh, the institution. Right. And she... Uh, her nerve breaks down and she doesn't do it. She goes directly to a dinner at a re- fancy restaurant yep. with her uh, daughter, her husband, and uh, her granddaughter. Yep. And it was in that scene that I felt that the editing was like, we're just not going to, I know that they wrote and probably performed a version where she was like, you know, I looked at him and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to do it. And I'm like, was that in the movie? It, she, if it was there, they just they, kind of like she smoothed it right over. about it, and Judy Greer cut her yeah. off and was like, Mom, no, but you not need, here. Not, I yeah. think you needed that to give the last scene like a fucking yeah. punctuation. I don't think it's so, because like, you saw the last scene. Yeah, but, but I, don't, didn't I don't really. I didn't. But I was I, like, yeah, I don't think it fully expressed why she was there. I don't think no, it really you connected. You just see her sitting you there with a gun. Her. Is she waiting in case he yeah. gets out? Is she, how, I'm exactly. like, how does she plan to do this? Yeah, exactly. She just had a moment with somebody just before this. Is like, is she feeling. I thought, she, for her first off, thought she was going to, like, thinking about killing herself. That's where my mind immediately went when I saw her sitting with the gun. I'm like, oh. I did, too. Until that's, we got, that's until where, I'm like, oh, okay, she's at the thing. She's that's the thing. That was my first thought, too. And then I thought, well, maybe she's just there in case. And I was like, I am not, actually not sure. So I agree. I, I think that that scene needed more punctuation. It needed more emphasis. And I think that. Like he said, I just needs time to breathe. Yeah, yes. I think. I know. Yes. Time to breathe. I know Jamie Lee Curtis said that that was her longest day of shooting was the, the scene. Yeah, with the, her la- yeah. Yeah, last and it was her last day of shooting. So she was like all the other cast had gone home and the everything. Shortest and, second. That's yeah. And she movie. said that she was actually not satisfied with how short it was because she felt like she was really pouring herself into that scene a lot. And then it was cut down to three seconds is what she said. Mm. So mm-hmm. I, I feel like, I mean, there was a lot of reshoots on this movie. That's not for forget that this movie was like people were very concerned for a while because they did reshoots very they late did that, um and maybe that's why the trailers are straight up lying to us but you know could be yeah there's another one where it feels like when going from moment to moment when Lori finds out that the bus has crashed mm-hmm. and then she goes over to her daughter's house first of all it commits the sin of people just not talking to each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. The bus has crashed. What do you mean the bus has right. crashed? And then you don't have any else. security. Like, right. Yeah. And then this is like... Michael the, the, Myers was on the bus. Right. <laughs> but this I, this yeah. is like, not in the movie. I, right. Yeah. <laughs> to play devil's advocate, I feel like um, Jamie Lee Curtis's character does not feel like she needs to explicitly say that because, like, her daughter even says, like, you only have one focus your whole life, right? Like, you you cannot let it go. She says you need to let it go. So, like, the bus crashed. Like, I feel like she thinks that's all she needs to say. That may be perfectly fine, but that does not... It's not communicated to the audience. The audience needs that. But we saw the bus crash. Why do, we don't need, uh, no, we don't need, we need characters to explicitly no, say it to each other. We do at some points, I think, because you're talking to... When you have her daughter who feels the way she does about her mother, like... She can tell her daughter at this point the bus crashed and Michael Myers has escaped. Yeah. Because she's trying to that express how something. she's not safe and that would yeah. mean something. Like this yeah. has happened. Mm-hmm. The thing, like, because she knows that this guy killed her friends and other people. So to say that Michael Myers, the bus crashed, Michael Myers is loose 
is something. That is a warning. That means that, you know, danger's on the rise. It, but and she doesn't say anything, and she, if she's trying to legitimize her actions to her daughter, she should tell her why she's doing this. Because the fucking bus crashed, and Michael Myers is on the loose. Mm-hmm. It gets lost between her seeing that on TV and having that interaction, which it should be in there. I found a realism in that, though, because, like, I feel like that's how families communicate. I feel like did, well, did that, you also? Yeah. I mean, as far as you know, that the the whole alarm of Michael Myers being loose. There's a scene with the uh, the police. You know, uh, when the uh, the psychiatrist is in the hospital, he's taken off the bus because he was riding with, and the uh, Will Patton police officer is like, "Look who was on the the manifest of this bus, mm-hmm. Michael Myers," and the the sheriff's like. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? We're not going to cancel Halloween. I'm like, I think maybe knowing who it is. I mean, clearly the you Will Patton should. character is like, <laughs> it's Halloween. It's 40 years ago to the day. Yeah, but he's the here it's 40 in town. Years. Like, like it's so out of like their memory at this point. But that's, but, right, but that's the but, problem. Yeah. They either have to have it out of the memory or in the town's memory. And this movie doesn't want to commit to either one. I I would say the only person's memory it is is in is in Lori's because like even her daughter's like cop. let it go, <laughs> let it go. Yeah, but he the reason why it's his, his in his memory is because he keeps saying I was there, I was and there. Other people keep yeah. telling you it was. That yeah. They really want to give him a connection to that yeah. first one, and and, I, but it have it it means nothing to okay, me. They this just might, keep saying it. This may be a stupid question, but why was it just not Sheriff Brackett? Why? Not just make bring Charles Cyphers back and make that sheriff bracket. First instead. of all, Char- oh, I'll say Charles Cyphers is in rough shape. He, uh, he's still and, kicking around. Yeah, I in, met him at a convention a few shape. years ago. Yeah, he, but I've seen him recently. He's looking rough. Uh, but I, and I don't know. But I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Why? I, don't know. I just like yeah, like you said, it really bothered me how much they tried to like legitimize him, being like, but he was there. Like, every, how many people say he was there? The yeah, says yeah. It, he says it's just like all right, we get it. It doesn't do. So anything he's been for on the police because, force you know for forty years. Good. Right. Mm-hmm. This guy's been on the police force for four, how fucking old is this dude? Like, yeah, yeah. could yeah. be. Was he twenty when this I happened? Say, if, like, he was, if he was a twenty-year-old right. cop yeah. and he's sixty now, I'm yeah. sure that makes sense. That's. Well, is it, yeah. I mean, pointing toward this, you know, so, okay, so if we're going to say that Michael Myers has no motive, he is just a killing machine, he wanders through Haddonfield in a tracking shot that's like a wonder that's trying to recapture the floating kind of Panaglide, Dean Cundy photography of the first movie, yeah. where he just randomly chooses victims and kills them, uh, all set to John Carpenter's score. And I sat there, you know, personally, as I was, I'm like, like, I know that Jason does this, right? Like, Jason is a motiveless, mindless machine that if you wander close to him, you go in his woods and he kills you. Or he goes to the woods next door and he kills you, right? Because he's just wandering around like a shark. Is that what Michael Myers has become? I don't, get, dude, we're getting, I'm getting Buster Rhymes uh, PTSD right now <laughs> from you saying he's, he's the shark thing. Oh, and it's, yeah. But, yeah. Don't do that. Well, I get that. Uh, I believe McBride or Green were quoted as saying like they wanted to remove the fam- familial connection because to them it's not scary if uh, this guy is only targeting his family. That way he'll never come after me. But if he's just out there like killing people at random, that's terrifying. Is that terrifying? Yeah, because yeah. that's my worst fucking nightmare is a goddamn home invasion like this. The, the third act of this movie is like the worst thing I could ever imagine happening to me. It can be terrifying. I don't know that this movie pulls. But well, maybe let's talk about the theory of it, it, though. The theory of it. Oh, yeah. Because shit like that still scares me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this. That's why The Strangers is a horrifying movie. Yeah. Right. I don't know if this movie reigns that feeling in completely, but it's also got to contend with 40 years of movies. Yeah. That it's trying to kick out of people's heads. Well, so. see, this is, well, okay, so this brings up another question that I have for you. It's like, I know that the filmmakers are saying this is Halloween too, for all intents and purposes, uh-huh. and we're throwing away the other ones. Did you feel, because I certainly did, that it spent an awful lot of time recreating Yes. Situations. The answer is yes. <laughs> four. A I lot have of notes four. on all yeah. the imagery a of Don. A lot of even Rob Zombie's even Halloween. Even Rob Zombie's yeah. Halloween. H two O. H two O. Even. Yeah. It, yeah. This like a that's the lot. thing. Like I was like like I think my fiance might have had a better viewing experience than me because he's like so pure to that. <laughs> Doesn't is, that, isn't it nice to be? Uh, I was gonna say ignorant. But, yeah, uh, but just, like the pure. Virgin. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Like and it must be wonderful. Like he'd be like, "That's so cool," and I was like, "They did it in H two O," and I, or yeah. he'd be like, "That's really scary," and be like. Don't you remember when we watched Rob Zombie's <laughs> Halloween? You know, like, and yeah. I even took notes. I was like, you know, the two cops that were joking around the cop car. Yep. I was like, this is Halloween Five. Oh you Jesus! Know? They talk about a fucking sandwich, and I'm like, yeah. what the it's hell? Halloween is Five, going- yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, and then and then um like Halloween. Okay, okay, the bathroom scene was like three movies together in one. It's yeah. Halloween the, six, Halloween H two O, and uh, and Rob, Rob Zombie's, Zombie's yeah, Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. yeah, that's all that. The yep. gas station itself was Halloween. It was four. it was exactly the gas station. I mean, I really four. felt it like uh, there's uh you know we haven't even talked about the secondary cast in this, but there's a cast of teens that you know for some you know I mean because they do are wandering off and going to parties and babysitting. And that whatever. party looked awesome. I wish my high school had a Halloween party. But at the party, uh, Lori's granddaughter's boyfriend suddenly cheats on her with another girl. And I'm like, I fucking saw this dynamic, too, in Halloween 4. Didn't this yeah, happen yeah, with yeah. Rachel and uh, mm-hmm. right. dude? And Brady and- it was like the same argument. Rachel, hold on. It was like, it didn't mean anything. Yeah. That, the only reason that happened was to have an excuse for her to not have a cell phone. Because he threw her Which, phone in the, dra- okay. in the bowl or whatever. That was the, the, the whole reason for strike that. Strike whatever for this movie. Nobody. And I mean nobody. And especially... And maybe this is me judging uh, teenage girls, but nobody leaves their phone and walks away. <laughs> nobody leaves the phone in that bowl of pudding and walks away without it. Not plus no, that guy single. turns okay, into you person. You something major in that scene. Did, do you not remember how he said, "Aren't you going to go get it?" He Doesn't was setting. Matter. Yeah, no, it does because like that's what abusive people do. Is no, they, I get that. Like, if she would have reached for it, something worse would have happened. So it's better for her to just walk Quite away. Possibly, but. He did that on purpose it, to set you're her saying, up. I get that you're saying that there's a justification for it in the plot, and yeah. you're saying, uh, he uh, sorry, said, Aren't I'm you pointing gonna go at get Michaela. It? He like antagonized right. her, and, Ma- like, and yeah. Sean's saying mm-hmm. it's a plot contrivance. I I think so. So that she doesn't. No, have a I phone. agree. I agree right. that they wrote that whole scene just so she doesn't have a phone. But I'm saying right. like I've seen worse rationale for not having a phone in the movies. You know, so mm-hmm. I'll say we're both yeah. right. We'll move on because I mean it was like straight up and like what was that pudding? It's like it pudding. looked like pudding. Like Why was there pudding. a giant fucking I bowl of pudding on that table? <laughs> that's, the the high party. that's the real question. That's the real question here. Because Halloween, you need like yeah, eyeballs yeah. and that's uh, the pus. Like it actually Bobbing would have made for more pus. sense for it to be like punch because it's like, oh, your phone's fucked then. Right. Make Why it can't just, you just throw in fucking water? <laughs> just make it Why water. Why be in pudding? <laughs> throw in some fucking punch. <laughs> okay, well, here's, I guess. Why can't the battery just be dead? I mean, simple because you know, she's a teenage girl. She uses good. her phone all the goddamn time. Yeah. If they turned okay, punch, so, I would have automatically been okay with it. Yeah. All right, but here's my question. I guess sure. maybe we can, is the problem. Maybe yeah. to put a capper yes. on this line of uh, exploration, was there if the movie's built on all these? I mean, we'll be kind and say homages to the other film. Yeah, oh yeah. Did um, it stage or execute any of these scenes better than they have been done in the other films? I'm yes. gonna say uh, well. Oh, see, that's a t- Colin. You you don't want us to stick on certain it's things. It's a loaded and question, then, and then you're just like, let's get through this quick, and then you just well, ask I mean, that question. Yes or no? Well, I'll say that uh, the homage to uh, the beginning of Halloween two with the ham lady and the yes, that rollers. Was great. Uh, I liked it. It's Mrs. Done, Elrod. It, is that is that the Elrods? In that's that? the I think Elrods. so. It's done better in two, or at least because it's only done in the quick second for this movie because it's uh, an obvious story. She's wearing the same robe, same curlers. Yeah. She's cutting up fucking ham, the making house a sandwich. Looks the same. Basically, so it's only it's definitely done better in part two, just because that whole scene at the opening of part two is fucking fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Because he's still just wandering houses. Yeah, but I'm saying even for the boyfriend girlfriend thing, the Grady Rachel thing pays off done because you have four. You, because you've hung out with them for an entire fucking movie. Where this one, right. it's like. Oh, yeah, you remember that there's this other daughter character that we have to yeah. somehow shoehorn into the I, movie. I personally thought the teenagers were useless in this movie. and mm. But they didn't last long. So, like, you know, we didn't spend much time with them, so I was fine with them being pointless. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually I actually really liked Vicky a lot. I kind of wish she would like hung Vicky. around a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Blonde, yeah. Uh, yeah. Blonde, blonde okay. babysitter. Okay. I like her the so best. there's a scene where she's babysitting this kid who Julia. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, why can't this kid be out trick-or-treating? That was my first question. Okay, but in the first movie, why are Tommy Doyle and Lindsay not out trick or treating? You know, this is. Don't they come home from? Maybe they did. Maybe this kid did. I thought that was afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh, I thought that, but when she leaves, everybody else is still out trick or treating. So I was like, okay, but whatever. We know what time it is. (laughs) But but yeah, sure. This kid. Maybe he's got Jehovah's Witnesses for parents or something, you know? This is like a skit in the middle of the movie that actually was one of the things I thought the movie did well. (laughs) It did very well. (laughs) Yeah. That 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 was a pretty good, like, five minute scene. It it is. And it does because that whole scene leads up to the, the exchange of, like, you're actually my favorite kid to babysit. I, I, I liked like their yeah, yeah, those, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jesus, they pulled it off for these guys. I really liked her. I was like, God damn, yeah, why I can't we too. get more of her? I right. really liked her. But they that's what they what they didn't do with anybody else. They have a scene 
where they have interplay between two characters and it gets a little payoff at the end and then you have feelings for when something happens to these mm-hmm. characters. Mm-hmm. They pulled it off very nicely with those. Yeah, mm-hmm. they did. I love the like, Dave, Didn't don't do go it. up there, you're gonna die. Like, yeah, I right. love that. Like, yeah. Or when he's like, no, send Dave up there yeah, first. Yeah. That was funny. I like that. That gold. Yeah, but then uh, it's uh, all the goodwill they built up there. They like shit canned when they fucking killed Dave off screen, I thought. You yes. know, it was like, it, what? it was, I don't know. The thing is with the off screen deaths in this movie, they were so gross when you finally got to look at them that I was fine with it. Cause like the yeah. like the scene with the gas station attendant with his jaw like cracked down like that that was so fucking gross like I didn't like yeah we didn't see it happen but like the aftermath was so fucking nasty I was fine with it's it like the movie borrows from the Rob Zombie yeah the post Rob Zombie it gore Rob Zombie two he lost his jaw at a yep. certain point was running around without mm-hmm. it. I don't know if it was Daniel Roebuck or the other guy. There's also mm-hmm. a head stomping in that one as well, which yep. happens in this movie. I love um, I mean, but I it's love a, the head stomping. It's a movie. goriness like it's that uh, it was real gross. That the John Carpenter one doesn't have yes. the, the second one start. You know, and yeah. the, there's been different levels of this throughout the the series, but yeah. it seems like this is the kind of grindhouse gore that would have been like at home in the Rob Zombie right, film. Because even when they get to what should be a simple gag, and I'm talking about when he peeks into the window in front of the house mm. when the the woman is talking inside and then he yeah. walks around and kills her. And the way he kills her, they couldn't just go with a simple knife gag because this is a, we're killing people with CGI still with a simple knife gag or what could have been a simple knife gag. To me, this is kind of like, why couldn't he have just like the, the fact that it could have been more realistic than what we got. Cause it's a, a hard shove through the neck, obvious CGI knife and blood pull out and drop. Uh, I, I had a real problem with that because I'm like, this could have been like a more realistic knife gag and it would have bothered me more. It would have been more scary to me had they done that. And I, I that death felt kind of like, eh, I don't know. What are we trying to do at this point? Like, I, I personally didn't like that one. I like the idea of it. I don't think the execution was kind of carried off very well. Maybe that's just me. I don't like CGI knife deaths. Uh, <laughs> like what, it's just, what? We can't think, just do it simple. We got a lot of them in Scream 4. Yeah, and, so, see, yeah. we did, and I yeah. don't like that. Yeah. But we can't just do a simple knife gag anymore. But yeah. some like, of this, not... I think, is these things that we have to live with. I just as so. you're getting older and as the movies are uh, doing, like yeah. that is what they do now. This is It's all CGI knife gags. I mean, I had problems with the fucking glow on the font, but, you know, <laughs> you know, so I mean, like the stuff that it's like, <laughs> okay, I get you can do that, but why? It makes it, you know, whatever. Um, so, okay. So this movie is, uh, trying to get Michael and Lori together. How does the drama work in this film? Because in this movie, um, we are kind of revisiting, uh, a, something that has also been done in Halloween H2O 20 years ago, right? They did this. Maybe better. I just watched each two. That, see, that was that was why I was watching it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. I, I, I watched watch it today it. and yesterday. So, right. um, okay, well, let's talk about this then. The yeah. fact that, like, the idea we're bringing Jamie Lee Curtis back to the franchise, uh, and we have already done this right. twenty it's years ago. It was idea. a big deal then, and it's yep. a big deal now. Yep. Only yep. now we uh, there's the social media echo chamber, so it feels like it's bigger of a bigger deal. Right. Maybe it is. I don't know. We'll see. You know. Right. Um, but. Uh, so in the in the last one, she's got PTSD. This is in H two O. PTSD, alcoholic. alcoholic, single mother, divorced. Right in this one, it's like she has exactly all the same. I'm like at least she's also living in California and the head mistress of a school, a boarding school. But she's living a life, which is kind of what I liked about H two O versus this one, because the and I. Uh, I, I know people suffer from PTSD and it can be something that they never get over. That, like these cases do exist. I like the idea that she, tr- you know, tries to get on with a normal life, but still has these problems. Mm-hmm. They keep coming back, which we get in H2O. I kind of like that better than the psychology that we get in this movie. Well, I'm going to say something that may be highly controversial. Sure. Uh, it's like, you know, th- all the hype about this is about how the Jamie Lee Curtis character in this movie is such a strong female character. And I get it, right? She can wield guns, shotguns like uh, Sarah Connor. But to me, it it's almost seems point. like the version in H2O is the stronger character. It seems to me people who suffer PTSD, who pull off this, like who can become Carrie Tate, mm-hmm. you know, where the cracks you don't see them unless you look for them. 
that's almost like the stronger character where this one's like the open wound. It's like she is defined 100% in this movie by right. the thing that happened. But, I'm like, right. Okay, when people say strong female character, I feel like that's a mischaracterization. Um, when we say we want strong female characters, what we actually mean is we want well-rounded. Um, and yeah, she is technically a stronger character in H2O, but um, when we are asking for more diversity in female characters in film, we mean we want them to be treated the same way as male characters are treated. So to have two different spectrums of Jamie Lee Curtis in the same situation is actually valuable, I think. I think it's good to have both I think so because have both. I think it like that that's what we strive for in other franchises. And I, yeah. I, I like that Halloween provides me with, with my choose my own adventure with this character. I love that mm-hmm. about this franchise. Is if I do want to see the stronger one, I have H2O. If I want to see what is arguably a more realistic, but probably extreme version of that, then I have this one. So, yeah. And I, I, I agree with all mm-hmm. that. Yeah, no. And I, like you were saying, I, we already had that version. Mm-hmm. I don't right, want to see that not, again. Yeah, I like that again. we're know, seeing a different like, version. Do we have to have all of those tenants again? I mean, could you have her be fractured but married? I mean, could she have like a husband yeah, no, character she could totally or a have family a it's and like they two kids yeah. instead of yeah. just one, right. which yeah. is a boy in one and a girl in the other? You know what I mean? It's like right. just to at least separate yourself from what the film franchise has already ground that it's pretty much already staked out. Yeah. Yeah. Like to change it and be like, well, at least this is something new. Yeah. Yeah. Why why couldn't she have success in one area, even right. if that so, was um yeah. in being married, right? Like uh, granted, that's like I'm not saying that that's like a successful person, but no, but, but I get what you're saying. Being successful at it, it's compared like compared to H2O, up. like, yeah, if she failed in that movie, why couldn't we have her have, fi- because have what at least is, that? What is she in this successful movie? at? And in other words, like, why is what is keeping her running for 40 years? And to just say it's waiting for Michael, I don't know that that's enough for that character. Well, I mean, she clearly loved her daughter, right? Like, that's evident. True. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, like. And they do express in the movie, it's just like, she does express her feelings about, mm-hmm. this is how I raised my daughter. If she is better off in the world, even if she does not like me or want to mm-hmm. see me anymore, like, then it's worth it. So there's that motivation to do it. Yeah, I, I think. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I, I lost my train of thought. Go ahead. Well, sorry. I asked for a beer and I, I, blew, I blew the whole conversation up right at the wrong time. <laughs> um, I thought no. you were still talking and it'd no, be sorry, fine. Sorry. I, I think you have a valid point, Colin, for sure. I just think that, yeah, like, I think that they, it's, it is weird that they specifically mentioned like twice failed marriage and your daughter got taken away at 12 years old. Also, like, that raised questions to me like, well, where did she go? Like who? Who is their yeah. foster family? Right. Like that raises other questions for me. And like, I don't know. I I think I don't know. That, that's all my thoughts. But the like thesis of the movie yeah. then doesn't it become like you know, uh, you know, you have Judy Greer as her daughter at some point saying like, you know, Mom, you're crazy. Uh, you raised me basically the way that Sarah Connor raised John Connor, yes. like preparing mm-hmm. for the apocalypse that never came. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this has been a scourge of my entire life, and the world is actually full what? of <laughs> rainbows and unicorns and love and hope and all this other stuff. When she said that, I was like, shut the fuck up. But yeah. the you know message, that's not true. The message right. of the movie uh, is like, it's not true yeah. at all. It's like yeah. she, Lori Strode, is still the uh, the Cassandra or the whatever, the lighthouse <laughs> keeper yeah, yeah, who yeah. saw it all coming and it was all true, you know? Right. Which yeah. is the way, I guess, all horror movies eventually mm-hmm. work out. It's sure. like, it was true all along. I think- and they don't really believe that the world's a nice, decent place. You need a fucking right, fortress it, with right, a fucking... Eventually they're uh, proven wrong. It's just, yeah. No, but like, back. we all know that one person in our life that's like way into conspiracy theories to the point that they are paranoid and don't live a normal life because of it. Yep. And like, this yeah, is just a person. way more extreme version of that. Yeah. You know? But in this movie, they're right. Yeah. Which is not normal. Like that's not how <laughs> oh, it well, usually right. works. Right. We're, we're, we're saying it's an entertainment. Lucky, right. Right. Yeah. Conspiracy <laughs> theories were based on her actual experience, not something she yeah. read on the internet. Right. You know, that's the difference. Yeah. The difference is she actually lived through it once, you know, but not just, you know, a Reddit thread that she saw. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, since you brought up the, uh, do, how do we feel about the, because the, the whole movie's whole point is to reunite, like you said, reunite Michael and Laurie. How do we feel about, and since we were talking about H2O, how do we feel about the meetings again of these two characters comparatively or not comparatively? How do we feel about the way in this new one that they were brought back together? Because it just, to me, feels like it kind of just happens like, yeah i'm I trying to remember for, the moment i was it's, i know it's the at moment. the house it's it's yeah, yeah. The, it's and she the sees him moment. out in the she's in the yard in the she yard sees him in, it's the mirror moment 
That's what I'm saying. She's in the yard. She oh, sees him in no, the no, yard. no. He's saying, but way before the house, they see each other when she shoots in the yeah. mirror. That's in the what upstairs. I'm saying. That's what she's she's in the yard and she sees him in oh, the mirror. Okay, okay. You say yard. She gets I the thought it was up her house. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Like, yeah. But no, <laughs> right. It's yeah, where she sees him in the mirror up in the thing. And Which that was Nick Castle in that scene. Yes, that's the Nick mm-hmm. Castle scene. So, yeah, that's another thing. It was like there's a big deal about him being in the right, movie. It's like, like oh, no, so I, what? You just wanted him to tilt might, his head. It like, might okay. be an unpopular opinion. I really like James Jude Courtney a lot as Michael Myers. I think I think he's got the perfect height with but without too much bulk. Like I think Tyler right, Maine is huge. so hulkingly huge. He's Jason. Yeah, he's Jason. Yeah, exactly. Basically. He should be Jason. Honestly, like, it's funny it, that Rob Zombie kept on saying Michael Myers is so much better than Jason, and then he made him Jason. He made him Jason. Right? Yeah, yeah that's really true. Yeah, <laughs> I like James Jude Courtney, and like usually I don't like Michael Myers scenes without the mask because it just doesn't feel right. right. But I actually liked how they shot around not showing his face oh, directly, I and like, no, I, <laughs> I was I'm like, like, you can't get him into that mask. Fast. I know. Yeah. It was like was Jesus like, Christ. I don't want to see the old man because I'm like he's an old. Old man, he's, he's an old human. but he's a buff old man though. Like he's, he's a tall, ripped old man. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know what? he's, he's got old man strength. Yeah, old man like strength. He's... Yeah, apparently, if he can squash a dude's head like a pumpkin. Yeah, you know, yeah. Rob, that's a book uh, page from Rob Zombie's book. Yeah. yeah, it felt like which I don't know. I liked I liked his presence on screen. I thought it read well. I think a big part of it though is that he has a jumpsuit that fits him well. Right. Um, that makes a big difference. Like yeah. like the jumpsuit fit him perfectly, and like it was tucked. The what? mask was tucked in perfectly. Yeah, it, that it, whole the look was good. I I agree with the look. Yeah, and. I think he he wore it well. I thought he did a good job, and I can't wait to meet him in convention sometime right. soon. So, <laughs> but I I was actually pleasantly surprised because like I was really excited for Tyler Maine going into the Rob Zombie ones because he was in the X Men movies, and then I was like, that oh, was something he's different. Too like, he's too big. Uh, at that point, I was okay. With, well, at, at that he point, fits I'm those movies. Yeah, he, he does. Yeah, he that's fits true. That. Yeah. It's, it's different. Yeah. It's a new version. I'm like, I liked it. He feels then. very he hunched like, over in those movies, though. Yeah. You know, like whereas James Jude Courtney is very like ramrod very straight up, yeah, all very the time. Straight and going. All right. Well, well how let do we feel about me... that meeting? Like oh. them mm-hmm. getting together. Is it? Does it? This is forty. This is supposed to be forty years. The man who stalked her for an entire night wearing this mask. She's got PTSD. She has these memories. Her whole life for 40 years has been a reaction to the events that happened that night from this man who stalked her and her friends wearing this mask. 40 years later, it comes to the point where they're reunited. You said on the street or uh, at, at, at later at the house. When she shows like, up, at, when he shows up at the house, is that right? At, at okay. any point, okay. like the re, the like the reun, reuniting, like it doesn't, it feels underwhelming. It felt these, underwhelming. It felt underwhelming. To to these, and this, because that's what I'm saying. I'm tr- struggling to remember the moment. Right. I mean, I guess it seems contrived at the time. The Halloween H2O version, where it's like on the other side of the door, that there's shitty shots, mask, and there's shots <laughs> in that movie earlier where she's looking at herself in a mirror that's exactly the same shape as the door. You know all this. Right. It's like she, he is the distorted version of her or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but even I can get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, no, in that. hindsight, more than what they did in this movie where it was yeah. like, but oh, I guess they're fighting invasion, now. Because it's a home invasion at this point. Like, that's why I'm fine with it because like. It's well, there's not the, uh, it's a movie, though. I, and maybe they're not doing this, but I think we were talking on uh, Messenger the other day. It's like, that hand coming it? through the glass door and grabbing her? That's like the real like first combat moment. Mm-hmm. That yeah, didn't I'm do it for you guys? I'm the, saying the moment of like, you know, the, the two opposing forces were coming face to face for the first time. Were they supposed to do have like a boxing face-off? No, but I... And I just, Is that what you want, no, Sean? No, no, no. But no the I, moment but of I, like, you... But, but why like, would, that, oh my why God. would that happen? That doesn't make any sense that that would even happen. But I needed to realize it. I think here's why. Because without the, the, the motivation from Michael Myers... I don't know what that guy's thinking or what, I don't know how conscious he is. And so when he sees her, I'm like, does he even know that that's the girl from fucking right. like, I have no, oh, like no the way he reacts. I don't know. I know she knows it's him, yeah. but does he know it's her? I yeah. don't know. The that, guys, the, the, right. no one, does that anyone else him. like call out to him and say Michael in the whole movie when they confront him? Yeah. Will Patton does. So yeah. the two people that were quote unquote there. One, one, yeah, but you know what I mean? Name? But I still don't know how much of a character is there. And I think right. that was the problem. It's right. like they build up this whole thing. It's like, I got to get him to talk. I got to get him to react. I got to get him to do, do something. Like, well, who is he? And it's like when he is, I assume the screenplay is saying that he is reacting by going after her. But I did. I, it was like, 
I mean, I'm reading into the movie at that point right. where something I don't know if it's actually there. So you're you saying I mean? if they met toe to toe on the lawn and looked each other face in the face and she was like, you motherfucker, whatever. And then they went at it. You would think that's better. It doesn't have to be you that explicit. You think that's better. <laughs> First of all, they can do it without it being that explicit. But that's what they he was just saying. Well, he was I'm saying, saying he just I'm, explained I'm that exact that, scene. that Halloween uh, H2O did it in a way that I guess uh, was now terrible. I'm looking that, at, like, was that was terrible. better. Not terrible. It was better. It's fucking stupid. Well, I didn't like it at the time because we have seen it in uh, uh, probably a month ago you know okay. but i'll well, tell you I watched it today <laughs> i'll tell you what's wrong with that scene is the score i in, in h2o, H2O. The yep, mask it's is terrible the score. too so it's hard to take it seriously but it's michael myers you know i mean it's the characters it meeting it's more like right. the theme of it but anyway okay so to get these two characters together we have to bend the logic of the plot because right. michael myers is off in his movie and jamie lee curtis is in hers and so we have the psychiatrist to bridge these two things. That guy. Oh, the, fuck that the guy. worst part to bridge the two okay, stories. This I, is what it felt like to watch Friday the 13th Part 5 for the first time. I bet. Because the this kid, guy. The knock off Carrie, and that's that one, right? That girl that like, has the television. No, the, the one seven. where it's not oh, Jason. Okay, never mind. And yeah, when there's some other guy oh, running around boy. with Jason's mask on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck that movie. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> what? They told me this was going to be a Friday the 13th movie. What the fuck? This is the moment in Halloween where they broke the fucking movie. I thought we're like all of a sudden yeah. out of the fucking blue, the doctor is like, I want, you know, I guess he's Murder. saying like, I want to know what he feels. I want to know why he does what he does and what sensation he gets or what he gets out of killing. So he kills the fucking cop to save Michael Myers, takes the mask off and wears it. And you're like, what is happening? <laughs> yep, and I'm like, that was my exact reaction. I'm like, <laughs> fuck kudos, is happening. do you, uh, David Gordon Green, because you are doing something that I have never seen Wild. in the and franchise never thought was before. Going to yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, and I will say, like the the moment to me where I really clenched my fist and was like, "Ugh," was um when Lori says, "Oh, so you're the new Loomis," and I was like, "Okay, I wrote a better version of that where she says you're no fucking Loomis," and then walks away. Mm, that would some, be so yeah. much better, mm, and yeah, that would fit with that better. character so much more. It makes so much more sense for that character to be like. I'm not getting close to anyone. Right, because she's angry at that yeah. point. Yeah. So she's why would... angry talking to these people. Exactly. And then this guy comes in and she's, yeah. And like, fans like me would have been like, yeah, he's no fucking Loomis. You tell him. Right, like, because that's yeah. what we're all thinking. Yeah. And is this, and this movie's trying, they're literally saying it to us, like, oh, you're the new Loomis. Yeah, that's why <laughs> I was like. <laughs> they, sh they literally are, and they should be smart enough to know. You can't do that. That's insane. Just switch it to you're no fucking Loomis and then have her walk that the fuck better, out of the scene. That is a better way. way. Better. That's better. Yeah. yeah. But the movie has that kind of snarkiness or whatever. It's like, it's, I don't know if it thinks that it's clever, but it comes off as kind of like condescending the whole, like, you know, wasn't that her brother? Right. Like, no, it it's like it just stuff people made up. And it's like, Ah, uh, you're you're really laying waste to the movies that I've loved for the past whatever years. So this is like, how take it easy. the fucking Star Wars people thought when they just uh, destroyed the canon, right? It was <laughs> yeah. the same thing. But everybody blew up about that. And nobody's talking about Halloween because they're like, maybe you know, a lot of these movies haven't been good. Maybe this mm -hmm. one's better. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so so basically, this scene serves to get uh, uh, what's this? Trakian? I'm saying that it's so not Sartarian. Sartarian drives both Michael Myers and Lori's granddaughter to her house. Yep. So we can connect the two pieces of right. this movie. The weakest together. part of the whole script. Yeah. Weakest. Yeah. Yeah. This is your brainstorming that came up with this, but whatever. Okay. So this brings us to the moment that we've been waiting for, which is three uh, uh, Strode women. Are they last name Strodes? Because that wouldn't happen through marriage and whatever. But Well, they, she gets married, so she's not a Strode more Karen. Mm -hmm. And then. Obviously okay. All right. Good. I don't think they ever say what their last names are, though. Right? But it's yeah. a, okay. So they're at least it's the three generations of women in this family tree who have this past trauma in the past, and there's this booby trapped house that. Well, it's give to it's Lori's trauma, who then gives trauma to her daughter Karen, mm -hmm. and then uh, Alyssa, Allison. Allison, Allison, Jesus. Shows how memorable she is. Allison is experiencing her own trauma at right this now. Moment. Yeah, I like kind of that. Mm -hmm. Like the one trauma mm -hmm. leads to this one, and then we get to this. Yeah, one. So it's I like not that layering of that. Bad dynamic. Okay, so here's the bold Halloween statement. Bold. I think this kind of thing works better when it's just one person you have to focus on. True or false? Well, I, mean, I I mean I never get to see this in movies, so I'll take it anytime I can. Sure. Get it. How often do I get to see three generations of women in one family like take on something? Yeah, yeah but it never that's what happens. I'm I'm, I get that you're seeing it, but is yeah. it a good? Did it work? I, it for worked the for movie? me. I was fine with it. Yeah. 
There you go. Yeah. And it's kind of. Did it work for you? uh, Very. Moments more so than others. Well, I guess here's what specifically. It's also really presented that way because look at how they portrayed the dad in this. Just a goofy motherfucker. I like that guy. I, I liked I, him. I liked him too. I, I do he like was him, a good just, bit of comic relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's he was. just a goofy dude, and yeah. he's just bouncing a ball, and he got peanut butter in his penis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He's also uh, Artie, the strongest man in the world. Like, do you guys remember from Pete and Pete? Oh my god, oh, that's shit. Artie. Shut up. <laughs> ah, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's yeah. Shut up. Toby Huff or something like that. Oh yeah, my god, that's, that's, it that's, is that's, him. That sounds like that's yeah, him. That's, him. Yeah, but he's. I mean, he's funny, but also like there are also parts where it's just like your daughter's missing and you know a killer's on the loose and everyone's pretty calm about that. But I'll. I mean, I'll, I guess I'll skip over that. Well, I guess here's my. You know, they my... send a cop to try and find her, meet her at yeah. the house, and all that stuff. They call her phone. She doesn't answer because she doesn't have her phone. because yeah. it's in the pudding. Uh, well, I think. You know? Well, I, I, underst- <laughs> I understand the how uh, Karen is reacting. Mm-hmm. Lori is reacting. The dad's mm-hmm. just kind of like. Ah! Yeah, <laughs> I think he's. I think it's one of those classic situations of you have like an overreactor married to an underreactor. Sure. Yeah. Kind of yeah, but he kind of guides. The, like I noticed the, every time he's on his wife's side, like he isn't yeah. doing what mm. we, the audience, are because we know that that Lori is right. He is pay, taking his wife's side, but it didn't feel like it was like he was stupid. Right. No. It felt like he was justified because from his point of view, it's like she's crazy. He's right. trying yeah, to keep he's the peace, right man. Calls. He's just like, trying yeah. to keep the peace. Like, Why yeah. do you have a gun? Get the gun out of my house. Like, yeah. 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 Right yeah. yeah. Like he, d- she definitely pointed a gun at yeah. him. Right. Yeah. 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 So, which, like, yeah. You which, told me, you taught funny. me, you're never supposed to do that. No. You're never no, like, supposed to point a gun at anything you don't want to shoot. Right. Yes. You're gonna point at something you should. That is like I know nothing about gun safety, and even I know that. Yes. Very true. Um. But I guess here's here's my issue with it. And maybe, you know, again, we can talk this out. And you can make, um, by having three characters, and again, I don't care who they are. I'm just saying three protagonists versus one antagonist at the end of your movie. Does your antagonist feel outmatched and therefore less intimidating? Because this is a monster versus, you know, the victim. And usually in these movies, and again, I grant you that this is something the movie is doing different than all the films that have been done before. Uh, but usually it's the victim through like the pulling themselves up through their bootstraps overcomes the, uh, the, the, uh, the trial and tribulation of fighting the beast. But here it's like, you got three people fighting the beast It's like, well, yeah, there's three of you. Like how scary can he be? But like, and it two of them did not believe in it until the, that second. No, but That's I, the thing. but even at that moment, the fact that you have three capable, full-bodied people it's taking still Michael on Myers, this Michael Myers, though. Like you know, oh, well, it's, that maybe this is where we have it. Maybe the, that's the thing. Because <clears throat> like it's. It's still Michael Myers. How much power does he have? As a character? It, that's right. the thing we don't know because it's always changing. What what he's capable of changes wildly in every movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, but he's able gets... to one hand lift people up a wall and but shit. But if we you know? do, but if we do what we're told we're supposed to do, and ignore everything else, we have to base it on the. <laughs> I guess, he's still unquote, a super strength unquote, in this movie. Powers of what he has in the first one going into this yeah. one. He still has crazy strength in mm-hmm. this movie. Should he though? As well, as well. well that's saying. what I'm saying. Like that's but why I'm, it's not evenly matched. I'm even talking, if it is three people. Right. more about like the de- demystification of the devil kind of thing. Like when yeah. I watched H2O the other night, like the thing that struck me about why that movie doesn't work is because without the Loomis character, you don't have someone got running around going like he's evil on two legs. Yes. I watched him do this, and I sat there watching him. There's nothing. He's just mm-hmm. evil, right. and it makes I shot him, him like six times. right because Loomis makes the character of Michael Myers some kind of for elemental force, force. Yes. if you take that away, as Halloween H two O takes it completely away, he's her brother. Your brother's crazy. Your brother did this, blah blah blah. And it's like it's just a dude in a fucking mask, and then he looks ridiculous. He's and still I'm like, super strength in that movie, though, too. Yeah, he lowers himself down from that ceiling with one arm in a crazy way well, that is not that? possible. No, I cannot do that. <laughs> can anyone at the table do that? Like, let's try it. Yeah. But there are people who could do that. There's fewer people who can, you know, survive getting shot six times yeah, at close range. Yeah. But that's you know, what I'm it's saying. Like, like it always changes. It's whatever fits the narrative is what he's capable of. Right. For all we know, this guy is uh, one of those people who just doesn't feel pain. Yeah, the but you're saying, the but, yeah. you, but but that saying that he's human. But that's the thing we don't. We don't know, and I'm fine with not knowing. I guess he come. I guess that's the thing. He comes off as human in this movie, where in the right. other movies, to me, the ones that I like, 
it's like he's more than human. Right. You know, he is evil personified in the shape of a man, you know, yeah. kind of thing. It's like you need and I, I did like the fact that Lori went around saying he is the boogeyman. It was like and the, the other cop was like, We gotta kill it. You know, mm-hmm. they adopt the kind of the Loomis speak. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate yeah. that they did that where they didn't do that in H two O. At least, mm-hmm. you know, the filmmakers were aware of right. that. I, I do agree with you that like H two O has like a really more grounded like atmosphere and kind of mythology. It's it like he's just a serial I, killer. I can't believe I'm saying this, but like it's greatest fault is how Kevin Williams it is. Like it like it is like I love Kevin Williamson, but like it's too much that in that movie. It is too much grounded in the real drama is what's happening in the school. Right. And that's like that's not what I want in my Halloween movies. <laughs> right. So yeah. no thanks. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. All right. So we're at the climax of the film. Mm-hmm. So he lots is, of home invasion. A lot of home invasion. Opening a lot closets. of walking around. A lot of, of quiet. But see, this is the shit that's effective for me because I'm like, God, this is my worst nightmare. Like, someone's in my house and I don't know where they're at. I, and I, I don't have guns, so I'd be way more fucked. So there was, um, it was very quiet during those scenes. Although it does, when she's in the room with all the mannequins and everything, I did get a little tense because they were going into the view where it's just the flashlight is the only thing giving you. Mm-hmm. Illumination, and I'm like, they're gonna do that thing where we come across them at some point and do something like that. So I was a little tense during that. It scene. was tense, it's but the it, was, only... it was too long. It was too, way too long. That's yeah, I agree. That's, that's what makes it long. worse the for first... me is how, when it keeps going. It gets, it also it gets better like... in the second viewing because I don't yeah. know. If I've only it, it everything kind of goes a little quicker in the second viewing. Okay, so I will give it that. First viewing though, I was just like, this is too long. Yeah, she's going back and forth between the mannequins in the closet way too much. Like, yeah. let's get to and well, get it done. No but you're oh. feeling that because like they're not ramping up like a, a certain amount of suspense. It's right. not like there's orchestrated. No score that time. Yeah. Yeah. That, but that could there's, be it too. That. It needs yeah. a score. It's like it it's not orchestrating suspense. It's just it's going by the old slasher movie thing of like now when I watch them, it bores me. Is like when you got a person walking around in a dark room going like Allison. Yep. Allison. And that was my first Allison, feeling and that's what out it of felt like. Uh-huh. I was just like, I almost, I was talking to a friend and I was like, was I bored during this? I might have been bored at a certain point in this. That's, that's why the gates dropping down was a good way to break up the tension. Now, about that, we get two, she goes into the, there's like the bottom rooms she goes into, and then she goes into the top rooms. Yeah. We could, and after second viewing, we could totally cut out the bottom rooms. And I thought about this. Because we get the examples of the gate dropping, which is what you want to prove in going through those mm-hmm. rooms, that this is what happens. You can drop the gates. Mm-hmm. She does that in the twice upstairs. Mm-hmm. We could have cut those out, and she could have gone from the living room to seeing the blood on the stairs and gone up to do that. But yeah. they're trying to show that she doesn't know where she where he is, so she's going to shut all the gates to every single room. But you get that because she does it twice upstairs. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I, There's enough play in the upstairs yeah. one before she gets mm-hmm. into the room where that all comes across. You yeah. could, there's... At like five minutes cut right there yeah. can be excised and gone. So that kind of doesn't help those scenes at that point. They could be gone. Yeah, I agree easily. with that. But it did feel a little it too long. It felt long. long. I, I mean, I, I agree that there was still tension. I also agree that a score would have made that tension stronger. Mm-hmm. But it was a bit long. There's nothing like the dump. Dun- dun- mm-hmm. Dump. Dump. Denim, denim, denim. What comes Thank in God, next? no fucking cat jumped out of a closet or anything. No, I was half oh, expecting no like a cat to jump out of a closet or something. I was like, oh God, please don't. No or like even like like a coat rack looking like a person. I was expecting that for a second there no, we too. No, actual like, uh, mannequins looking like yeah. people. Yeah, one, so. yeah but I mean, but she has a reason for having. What's the symbolism true. there? That uh, you know, they're She's white, the shell of a person. Face. I thought that was him. Or, or, she oh, well, populated her house with a bunch of They're hands. the same, so. Colin. They're yeah. the same. Just no face, <laughs> mannequin looking things. But she's redeemed by the end of the movie because I'm sure she's going to be all right after this. It's catharsis. Is she? You know, I don't know. Because the psychiatrist brought up uh, uh, an imaginary scene for me that I'm like, <laughs> or no, was it the, no, it was the podcasters brought up like, you know, he's been there for 40 years. Have you ever just gone and talked to him? Right. <laughs> I'm like. That's a good. That would be That's a good a idea. idea. I'm like, yeah. yeah you, you think go see if you're the victim, it's a bad idea. Fucking glass, and you could at least see the guy and be like, he's like a bug. He's this little fucking guy which who's is, like, which is the worst not scene the big... you can have in your movie because you're giving like, <laughs> yeah. Why does she do that? Yeah. You're just like you don't want to do that for your movie. I know. You maybe uh, have your audience think it, but don't just tell it to them because you don't voluntarily go confront your attacker. Yeah. That's just not. But yeah. No, they don't. No, they don't. People do not do. 
do that all well, the time. I've listened enough to. But I mean, shows. you see, like maybe they don't do it, but I've seen enough shows where it's like you know somebody's afraid of snakes, and so they have like this kind of what do you call it? It's a uh, something therapy, exposure therapy, exposure therapy, yeah. where like therapists will recommend that you actually get close to it, and then you you know somehow that. But right. like with this, and, like if he, like I mean, they never state this, but like let's just like if he had a chance at parole, then that's not right, the court. kind of. That but was that, the other thing. I was but gonna that's bring not up. the kind of exposure therapy you want. Then if, if there's a chance he could get out, get out yeah. that's yeah. you know. But yeah. isn't there? Would she not like there was? And we're going into stuff that we're just supposed to think of now. Like he was captured. There would have been a whole court process for this. Yeah. She never showed up to any of this stuff. Like, like I would you I'm curious? Um, pe- but I'm if you were the victim of this do. crime, you would. Yeah. I mean, but even, but if nothing else, she would have had to have come in to testify uh, or something. Like I think she, she would have been involved have in the process. Yeah, because there's enough. There's enough evidence everywhere. He didn't where, kill her. He killed yeah. three other people. Yeah. But her, you know, there's, so there's other years. witnesses, I guess. Yeah. Right? Or are no, there no exposure? I mean, no. He's... Whatever. Yeah, this is you're right. You're going. Over the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So basically, it's, it's not on her to solve this problem. No, no. it's not her responsibility to confront her. Is it shit. not? Like, I mean, you know, it's up. It it's up to she, her whether no, she wants she can to do, or not. Right. She can do whatever she yeah. wants. But I mean, it's it's not, not as to. easy as you guys are laying it out to just confront not, your attacker. No, I'm not saying it's easy. You, all, you guys were just saying but she should have just gone uh, and done it. Well, not, not, not easy movie. to do yeah. it, but maybe psychologically that would have been like Is a that the movie you want to see? Do you want to see a psychodrama about her confronting her killer instead of the actual horror movie we got? Like, that's a, that's a completely different uh, movie to me. I'm, well, that's I'm a saying completely there's themes presented that lead us to I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like the whole theory that he's going to come to me. I kind of. I was, was going to wait I was for kind it. Of she okay said the house was in a cage. Yeah, it, it was, was never. It was never a cage. I kind of liked that. Mm-hmm. I was okay with that. Yeah, I don't like the delivery of the. the it's kind of stilted, but I like the idea. Yeah, of it. no, exactly. Like, yeah, the delivery I'm with is you. very stilted. I'm just like, ah, that's a little I, forced. But I felt I like she was yelling idea. it over sounds in the scene. Is what it kind of felt like. like the way it, it, trying to sing it loud enough to capture it. It feels very presented. Like it did. We're trying. We're definitely trying to tell you this. Um. But in that whole process, it does lead to one of the best moments I think of the movie. Her daughter, Her, Karen. I Karen getting the gotcha that. moment. That is was brilliant. My, she sold it. It might be my yeah. It might be my favorite moment of the it. movie. I loved that because so I did much. too. I and bought when into she did it the gotcha, hard. I was like, oh shit! Yeah, yeah. and she got him. That was brilliant. Lo- I, I love really that she love had that the moment. shotgun with her initials on it too. It's like it's yeah. always been there waiting for whenever she's and you ready. Could, and that you could tell that a kid did it. Yeah. Right. I loved that. I that thought that scene was, a was really, great. If nothing, if if you can say what you want about um Judy Greer, how she was used in the movie, underused or yeah. whatever you say, but she that it, is her moment. It led up to and that she scene. She did that was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, Chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Liked it. No. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I understand her position in the movie. I get where she's coming sure. from 100%. Yeah. It's, not movie, a, it's yeah. not a it's not a it's not a very forgiving position that she ends up taking. Like right. you like, may find her not you may find yourself not liking the character, but mm-hmm. that is that can also like feel like a very real portrayal yeah, yeah. of that dynamic. I, that's the thing I like about this movie is I feel like when you're watching it, you can understand where Lori's come from. You can understand where her daughter, Judy Greer, is sure. coming from. You can yeah. understand this is my life forever. Where, where Alice and her granddaughter's coming from. I feel like yes. they, they do enough, um, you know, showing their different kind of lifestyles to, to mm-hmm. understand where they're all coming from. Very right. much so. And the like we said, the progression of trauma as it goes mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. one to the other. Is, you know, it's kind of nice. Did you guys? Oh, we forgot to talk about it. I'm sorry, and then we'll wrap up. Oh, right. But um, the scene when um, Lori is standing outside of uh, Allison's school, just That's like so how nice. Michael Myers did, yeah. and then yeah. like she gives her the cash that she got from the interview, whatever. Yeah. But like, I maybe I'm reading way too much into this shit. But I was like, that is like, it's not just leaning on like this imagery from the first movie. I kind of thought of it as like she. <laughs> She is to her own family what she fears most. Like she is the monster to her own family, right? Yeah. Because yeah. she's oh, yeah. causing all the hurt to her own family. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. so I was like, that's what that means. But yeah. I was like, am I reading too no, much? No, no, not, not at all. Much. Not at yeah. all. Where yeah. and whereas the Allison may not see it, mm-hmm. Karen definitely does. Yeah, yes. exactly. Absolutely. And so the movie presents it as that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, no, I agree wholeheartedly mm-hmm. on that. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. She's definitely she is hurting her family. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's that's the situation she's in from experiencing what she did. And it's so obvious to everyone else, but she can't even see it. Right. And that's it's so obvious that she's standing on a corner staring into her fucking school like a creep. And <laughs> I love she that. doesn't even it doesn't even register. I love that. That's weird. Right. Uh what do we think about grandmother? I can't don't like just, that. Can't we just call it's too her grandma? formal. It's too formal. The whole grandmother thing throughout the movie. 
Is that because didn't you just this is nitpicking? <laughs> nitpicking but I'm just like, it bothered me. Did you call grandmother? It, it bothered me. People say she didn't deliver it right. She didn't. Is sell it because it. she didn't have a relationship with her really? So I know. I get that. That's why thing? they would do it. Yeah, but it doesn't feel right. It no, doesn't it doesn't feel, feel right. right but no. that, again, a little thing. Um, how, how about Lori going over the balcony? I loved it. I mean, and I was in, I was into isn't it. Isn't that great? Yeah. There you go. And he looks back and she's gone. Is I love that. the echo of the uh, first yeah. movie. I loved it. That whole bedroom the was the same room. Mm-hmm. I loved oh, it. The, the layout room. was the, the same. The same room. Yeah. Like shot at the same <clears throat> angle. Same. Yeah. yeah. They've, I mean, they've said. Yeah. In, you just in, like redressed or right. something. They like said that. it in, in interviews. Um, I'm, I'm going to say I noticed it before they said it. Just to claim that. But they said in interviews <laughs> that like, they built them specifically for that, obviously. Um, so how did this movie end? Like where do we, where do we get at this? Uh, like, he dies in fire trapped. again. Michael gets caught in the cage. How yep. dare you say Michael dies in a fire? <laughs> we don't no know that. Way. We don't know that. <laughs> no, no, we know for absolute sure that he doesn't. I'm gonna say, yeah, because yeah. not at all does he die in his fire. Gotta, he's out yeah, because they don't show him in, when they cut back and the things yeah. on fire. Nothing. He's not there. If, no. Yeah, if There's, they, if they wanted they're... us, if they wanted us to think he died in the fire, they would show him dying. And in the they're fire. doing the yeah. uh, the homage to the end of Halloween with the different angles yeah. on like, yep. yeah. which I liked how they escaped in the back of that truck though. It was very Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, yeah, yeah it was. I got the feeling too. Yeah. I don't. What I don't appreciate is. You're not making a movie. You're setting up a franchise. Yeah. And oh. now you have to because you got to make money. You got to continue. Mm-hmm. And all that. Yeah, but they're not that? making their complete movie. They're, that ending mm-hmm. fucking pisses me off because it's made mm-hmm. specifically to continue it on. Yeah. And I hate it. And, I, yeah. and honestly, I don't, <laughs> but I don't want But only certain anymore. people would even catch that. I right. think most people just go like you burn in the fire. Mm-hmm. No, even, I, it's, even, it was no, so even, subtle. That's why I'm like, I don't I get what you're doing because uh, you're going to have an out. You know, right. if this is successful. My whole family was make just another like, one. He, my whole family was just like, he's not dead. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So even like, but, like but non also, pe- people that are not obs- as obsessed as us were like, yeah, not he's as not obsessed dead. because but- they've had fucking like forty goddamn years. <laughs> yeah. no, evil Very never true. dies. Yeah. And yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. the Friday Thirteenth yeah, movies got to that tagline before mm-hmm. Halloween. Uh, yeah. 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 And yeah. Well, that's very true. All but, right. Uh, the, you know. He burns. Well, we have. Uh, you gotta stop us now, or we'll yeah, I know because we have we have a large uh, 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 mailbag. Everybody uh, wrote in about Halloween. Uh, uh, so what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna summon Igor. Then we're gonna give you our what we actually thought because you don't know yet. Did we like or hate uh, Halloween 2018? And uh, we're also going to rank all the Halloween movies. I bet you can't wait to hear that. So uh, <laughs> because nobody else does that. That's briefly, right. we're going to here. briefly. Yeah, we're not going to yeah, debate it. No, we're just it's very briefly. brief. We're just going to give yeah. what we thought of it because yeah. we can't debate at this point, mm-hmm. and or at least not have a debate you haven't seen. 50 <laughs> we're going to do times. that after the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is when we just yell at each other. It's like, how the fuck could you like three? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first of all, let's bring in our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. <laughs> Thanks, Igor. Uh, He's got his Halloween mask on and a bowl of pudding. He's ready. Uh, <laughs> he watched the movie. He's going to put his private. No, he, does, he just listened to us talk about it. He's not allowed to leave. He was the like, house. pudding's a big part of this yeah. movie. He's not allowed to leave. So. Here's the question. We, uh, how can the folks at home get a hold of us and join the Freak Show family? How can they get Igor to hand deliver their message to us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Freak Show. <laughs> By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. <laughs> Igor, right sorry, people, sorry well. guys. Igor dropped the pudding. That's what we're <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Or on everywhere. Instagram. At Saturday Night Free Show. <laughs> Collins is continuing on. Uh, so I tell you what, the first uh, message, we got a lot of email. Thank you all for writing in. Uh, oh. Unfortunately, we can only read so many of them. Otherwise, we would go like three hours long. But we're really happy you're all excited about yes. this. Yes. yes. Uh, so Amos excited. Martinez writes in and says, I just discovered the podcast last week and I'm completely addicted to it. It's an awesome show, guys. We'll be tuning, tuning in for every episode. Yay. Thanks, man. That's Thank awesome. He, I was talking so to him earlier about uh, our mutual hatred for Texas Chainsaw 3D. Oh, well, that's here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got it. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He says you need to finish off the Critters, Critters series eventually. You got it, sir. He says Halloween <laughs> looks great, but I'm always cautious with movies like this. Texas Chainsaw 3D yeah. tried the direct uh, sequel route, yeah. and it was yeah. incredibly disappointing, though it wasn't the worst of that franchise. Either way. I'm stoked for Halloween 2018. Thank you, sir. Yeah, no, I I, I don't want to watch Texas Chainsaw 3D with you guys, but I would like 
a, a, a pedestal to rant about how much I hate that movie at the same time. Yeah. It has it's a lot terrible. of problems. It's a yeah. lot of problems. Um, lot ba- of pro- basic math is a problem in that movie, well, apparently. Yeah. So. <laughs> Alexander Daddario should be how old in it? Uh, like in her 40s. Yeah, she should be And in she's 40s, like 19, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. she's Plus extremely like, attractive, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. But the uh, I, the morality <laughs> yeah. of that movie just like fucking floored me. I was like, what the fuck? It's fu-? bad. Yeah. Do your thing, cuz. Yeah. That's like the most cringeworthy yeah. line oh, in like Jesus. any movie. And yeah. Leatherface runs through a whole carnival and doesn't kill anyone because mm. he's too busy focused on chasing one person. Mm. Right. That Can what? That's how it happens. That comes at you in 3D. I mean, the 3D that movie was not good. No, and and, and I'm a fan of those kind of movies. Yeah. Right? They will, will they uh, earn it? The special effects was terrible. In that movie. All right. Well, about movie. Halloween. Mm. Mm-hmm. Which one? The movie that we watched tonight or last night? Nick Siebel. I hope I'm saying your name right. Siebel. Is it Siebel? Let it's me know, Nick. Nick. You're right, Nick. Nick Siebel says, uh, Halloween 2018 was an awesome film. I loved every minute of it. Damn, Michael Myers was savage AF. Though, spoiler, when he killed that, he's got an emoji. It was well written, and the Michael Myers was the star of the show. Thanks, David Gordon Green, for paying homage to the past and making a way better Halloween film than those two Rob Zombie pieces of shit that ruined beloved characters and a horror classic. I can't wait for a sequel. Oh, Jesus. Happy Halloween, Saturday Night Free Show. I like oh, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I like, I, I like your passion. Yeah. I like your passion. I, I like There's a you. lot of, uh, a lot like, of multiple, well, exclamation A lot of emojis marks. and exclamation points. Yeah. Yeah. Colin, I like that you actually said AF instead yeah. of as fuck. Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta read it as written. That's what, <laughs> an emoji. Like, it's a head emoji. I, I will say, it. to his point, like... I think the teenagers in Rob Zombie's movies are much more cynical than the teenagers in this movie. Oh, yeah. Well, um, it's Rob Zombie movies. Yeah, so yeah. Cynical, I, I, cynicism I, is the yeah. key factor. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that the teenagers in this movie are much more well balanced. Uh, ben, ben Avid, 1979, says, I just watched it. I loved it, but I was a bit disappointed with the ending. Don't want to spoil it, but let's say that if you're prepared for that long finish, long, wait, if you prepared. For that long to finish the job, you would sit. You would stay to make sure he was dead this time. That's Laugh fair. That's, That's fair. fair. That's fair. For You'd watch him for turn four to ash. Years, I would watch the house burn down, and I would dig through the ashes for his body. Mm-hmm. In in personally, in her defense, her whole house was about to go in flames. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She had to get out. Of she there had to get way. out. You don't want right. to melt. Well, in the first <laughs> in first viewing, I, it didn't seem like it happened quick enough. So I'm like, you're gonna explode. Please yeah. get out of the house. Yeah, it goes by much quicker in the second viewing. Yeah. But the first time I was just like, Leave. but I but I will I will say like instead of immediately igniting the house, maybe just stand there and shoot him in the head a zillion times yeah. and then burn it down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe like, you're I don't know too much trust. In the fire, but she's seen him get shot so many times before, and he just got up. Only it's six times. It's just you good measure. Only, let's test uh, the theory. Uh, and more. there's Double a tap. basement window with right. light coming in through it in that basement. I just want to point out. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay, it so. feels like there'll be an easy out. Well, Mark Harrison writes in, and he says, "Now that Michael and Lori aren't related, has the sexual tension risen between them?" I wish. Oh God, immensely. That would be- no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, I know I'm in the minority here, but I feel like some of the sequels were more enjoyable movies. Personally, I like Halloween 4 and H2O the best. 5 and 6 you can watch if you have nothing better to do than nap on the couch. Halloween Resurrection, hey, we all need something that supports why we buy beer and drink a lot at home. <laughs> yeah, I read this earlier. This oh is a pretty God. accurate description that's, of how I know, feel about the Halloween That's franchise. how we watch all of those movies. Yeah. You, you just described or... all of our habits with watching yeah. those movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Coat, 1974, writes in and says, Halloween 1978, to me, is the perfect slasher, thriller, slash horror movie. I remember seeing this movie when I was about eight years old in the early 80s on late TV, hearing in the news about Ted Bundy, the Zodiac Killer, and Son of Sam, to name a few, Michael Myers seemed to me so real and very possible. I can't wait to see the new installment with Halloween 2018. I'm a fan from Canada and keep up the great work. Saturday Night Freak Show. Thanks. Podcast. Thanks. That's awesome. Steve also does some amazing, um, like horror artwork and like drawings, and he nice. takes commissions. So Ooh. check out his artwork because it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Where can you find that? Uh, his what is Steve Coat 1974? Yeah. yeah, his Instagram. He's got yeah, a ton. he's got like, some good stuff. He's got some. He did like um like a Last Supper type thing, but with all with horror, horror icons. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. really cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, very nice. Mm-hmm. I'll have to look that up. Uh, Novato Judoka writes in says Danny McBride being a writer on this makes me worry that maybe there's a little bit of unneeded jokes that will mess with the tone that you wouldn't want in a film like this. 
And he also says, is there any chance of a new round of listeners choice coming? Let us give back to you as you've given back to us. I now, I now find myself <laughs> using the terms F shack and love rhombus as much as possible. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I think that's a totally valid concern going into this movie. I think I think we all kind of like under the surface had the concern that like mm-hmm. Danny McBride is known for what like Pineapple Express and like he's bound right. down, right? right? So Most like, yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you he know. gave us sitting here clipping my nasty ass toenails. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I fucking laughed my. Ass I think off. it was yeah. an appropriate amount of humor. I yeah, I think so, so too. Well. I think they hit the tone. Uh, and it, it could be could be listener's choice in the future. It did give it's us usually around it, it, or after the new year. I'd be yeah, down for another we, one. Is when we get into listener's yeah, choice. Yeah, I, I think I think there's definitely some listener choice. Uh, maybe a month, maybe a pick. I don't know. We'll see. I'm but, down for another. Yeah, but I mean, it gave us it gave us things like Dead Heat and Terror yeah. Track. <laughs> Terror Track and, and Rock and Roll head, Nightmare. It also gave us Rawhead Rex. Fuck you, yeah. Palace. Okay, it fine. also gave us Rawhead so Rex. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just won't let Ryan pick one this time. That's very true. But I think look for that in the new year. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. I would say. We that get, means we you're get soliciting. End of the year is very full right now. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so about last week's episode, Intruder, oh. mm-hmm. Pinhead One Thousand, uh, writes I forgot in. That's what it was called. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not like, a good title. The grocery store murder movie. Uh, <laughs> Pinhead One Thousand writes in and says, "I enjoyed some of the great gore effects in this film, yes. but I must see, but it must be seen in its full uncut version, yes. as the cut version misses all the best bits." Yeah. Totally absolutely. agree. There, there's no. I mean, it's only like 88 minutes for the unrated. Just do it. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Uh, Horror Boy writes in and says, "Intruders, a good little film. It's surprisingly brutal." Yeah, it was surprisingly brutal. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Especially we, for how low budget it was. Yeah. You know. We all recommended that, right? Like a- uh, Colin, no. did. Colin did Colin not. No, I did not. That's right. Avoid, four. avoid yeah, at all costs. No, I'm sorry. It was on the outside. You, Ooh, you see were on it. the fence with yeah. that one. You were. I was. It was struggling. Yeah. And I remember the gore now, like in my memory, it's it lives better than it did probably on the day. <laughs> uh, about our episode, The People Under the Stairs, which was our 300th episode. Oh, sure was. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grant Parrish writes in and says, AJ Langer, who's the star of that movie, is now the Countess of Devon. I think yes. she and Grace Kelly are unique in the actress turn royal slash noble way. Yes, we had a discussion about that. But isn't Jamie Lee Curtis a Baroness? Jamie Lee Curtis is Baroness, and obviously, really? Me- yeah, yeah, she she's is. married to Baron Christopher Guest. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. And obviously, right. Meghan Markle is now a princess. Yeah. yeah. Actresses right. becoming oh, actresses. royalty. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. That's right. She was right. on uh, Fringe. Suits. 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 Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to say suits, but I always get suits and white collar confused. It's so suits. It's suits. It's suits. Yeah, white collar is not on any Jokes galore. Yeah. Suits. Um, yeah. Our listener, Basin Voorhees, writes in what up? Hey, and boy, hey. says, uh, am I the only one who feels the people under the stairs should have been a Tim Burton film? I could see the parents being played by Helena Bonham Carter and Johnny Depp. Right, with a Danny Elfman yeah. score? I can he be says it. Yeah. To ah. me, it has Burton written all over it. Danny Elfman doing the music. Yeah. yeah. My imagination is going wild with this, but maybe it's just me. No, it would have been better. I, I agree. I 100%. totally agree. It would have been better. I can see him doing a remake, actually. I would have a more positive <laughs> yeah. reaction. The People Under the Stairs <laughs> may be musical. The house design would have been crazier. I was going to say, the house right. design yeah, would have oh, been yeah. amazing. Yeah. Like, it, it would have been yeah. crazy. This is a beautiful, like, Victorian yes. house. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm not going to so lie. Cool. The more we talk about it, the more I want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and his people would have looked cooler. Yes. Like, the People Under the Stairs would have looked more And there probably would have been more People Under the Stairs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Or the people would have actually been under the stairs. <laughs> Not yeah. in the walls. Not and- in the walls. Not the people <laughs> yeah. in the walls. All right. So now we're going to go around the room. We're going to talk about Halloween, the a new movie, and what we thought of it. Should we start like with us, Holly, and work our way up to Sean and Michaela, or just go? <laughs> Or, I, feel yeah. like, I feel like you should go, and then I should go, and then let them duke it out. And let we them duke it out? Yeah. Okay. Right. We might actually You want to go leave. first? <laughs> or should, All right. Do you want to do that? No, go ahead, Colin. Oh, okay. Um, wait, this is, oh, wait, I forgot. I keep thinking this is your pick. It's just a special it's episode. It's just All right, a very right. special right, freak show. Right. Yeah. Very That's right. This is episode. the hijacked freak show episode gotcha, where we gotcha. went to see Halloween because it's the big... It's bigger than all of us. <laughs> it so. really is. 40 years. Uh, so, 40 years on, I went to see this movie. Uh, like I said, I mean, I guess setting you up for this, I have, I, you know, I get the fact that you guys, this is your first Here comes major, concerned dad, Colin. Yeah, the, your major <laughs> Halloween film that you've seen in the theater. I've heard this, like, for the this past couple of weeks that Sean and Michaela My haven't first, seen. Well, for me, movie? it is. Like the Major Rob Zombie movie? remakes are the only other things I've seen in theaters. Oh, I've got. Which means I've, you saw those. I've been. Well, I've. Because I was. H2O I was eight when H two O came out. Okay. But that's only like 
one, two, three, four, four movies. Yeah, but what? Yeah. That's four fucking movies in this. For anyway, yeah. my point being, I think I was telling them beforehand that it's like I've I've had this moment before. <laughs> like right when I saw Halloween four in the theater, it was like this is we're getting and Michael Myers is coming back to the theater. It was a huge deal because before that he'd just been on TV. Now he's going to be yeah. in theaters. Uh, then H two O was like we got Jamie Lee Curtis and you know we got uh, the Lee nurse Lee from uh, <laughs> Halloween and we got right? um, Donald Pleasant's voice actor and this is the new Halloween H or Halloween two. Um, and so now we've got another Halloween too. I think the hubris of the filmmakers to go like, you know what? We're just going to throw out all the other shit. It's like, it doesn't work for me because I can't, I, I have the memory of all these other films in my mind. And so I go to see this movie and then all it does is like, give me the greatest hits of all these other films, but it didn't improve to me. I didn't think it improved on any of the, uh, the, the sequences that I'd seen in the other movies. It just made me think of them which I didn't expect to be doing, but maybe part of that is like when you're setting up the story, this is the only way that you can do it. If you're going to do like Jamie Lee Curtis versus Michael Myers, it's going to end up a lot like H2O and it's going to end up like a lot, like he's got to get out of the asylum. And you know, if you're going to do uh, he gets out of the asylum, you do it like Halloween four, that movie fucking stormy night and the fucking, ah, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lightning strike. And, and that raining. fucking yeah. guy who was like, and his doctor of all people shot him shot six him times, six times. Oh, it's hey. fantastic. And then you get the fucking thumb in the goddamn, you know, that's how you start a movie. <laughs> this one, I was like, Jesus, oh, there's got this, nothing to do with this place. Yeah. It, right. <laughs> it's the myth building. Guy, yeah. This movie had like a cold open that I was like, uh oh. And then there's the title. I'm like, did they earn that? And then after that, 20 minutes into it, I said to myself, has like any, like, has there been a set piece or something cool that's happened that I want to see this movie again? And the answer was no. And then 20 minutes after that, I was bored and I'm like, this isn't good. There's too many characters, there's too many plot threads. It's unfocused i'm like the first john carpenter movie is a lean fucking machine i understand why everybody's doing what they're doing during it uh halloween 2 to me is uh is part of the package it almost feels like those two movies were filmed simultaneously even though they were filmed separately the idea that you know that he is or she is his sister like suddenly rationalizes all this stuff from the first movie, even though the first movie, like I said before, when I was talking about the reason that he's going back to Haddonfield works, but giving it, you know, she is also the sister. And the fact that it takes place on the same night is like, that's the Halloween storyline ends with him, everybody going up in a big, you know, bang at the end uh, to just say like, you know, and that's why every movie since has been like, well, we have to at least keep Halloween one and two together. But, you know, this one's like, nope, we're going to go back and, and yeah. re recreate this thing. And then it's like, but then you fuck up like some of the things that I think like his motivation, who Michael Myers is and you, you change what he's after. And then you, you take away like the power of the character. Uh, and then we give you all of these different characters to follow that. I'm like, I don't, you know, I had this problem with Halloween H two O. Also, I know we keep talking about we're bringing that up because we, I guess it, this is because it's, it's the movie that did this before. You know, it's it's a lot for this this movie to ask for us to put what ten movies out nine movies out of our mind. Like that's right. it's just impossible. It's not, this movie isn't really made for us, and that's the thing right. that's like uh, this movie but is I feel made like for they the told people. Us it was made for us, right? Like, I feel like they well, yeah. told us. Oh, yeah, because they're like, yes. we're fans of this movie. We love this. We're one of you, you know, but it is not made for the <laughs> people who are fans of this film franchise because they basically said we threw all that shit away. It is for people who are like 16 years old right now today this year who never watched AMC Fair Fest, which is running the fucking, yep. you know, marathons, but like, who have would, seen maybe the original going one. To see this? They've maybe seen the first one because they were like. Uh, which, which what? How many movies do I have to watch to get in this? And their one. friends told them just one. Yeah. And right. so they watched and that's the, the first only reason one. they watched it because if they came upon this series and they're young people, I guarantee you they saw a different movie before they saw this one yeah. or the first one. And like, do okay. I have to care about that anymore? Nah, forget I, about it. This is a whole. I, as long as you remember the first one, you're good going. Into I feel this. like it. I mean, this might be really presumptuous of me, but I feel like younger people are more going to see your insidious and sinister type movies and your well, like sure. paranormal jump scares than movies like this. I really don't think they give a fuck about movies like this. I think this movie is made for people that recognize the character and recognize the history, whether they follow it or not. They 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 at least know like that's something I know exists. Yeah, but I, but that's why because. 
I mean, Michael Myers is royalty in this. I mean, there's three guys. There's Freddy Krueger, Michael mm-hmm. Myers, and Jason Voorhees. Like, you can say there's other guys. B-team. Leather, B-team. Leatherface B-team. Leatherface B-team. 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 He's B-team. Uh, technically. He yeah, I think he's that. technically B-team. Technically I know, because I, I, mean, I get you. That's the best one, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> Actually, okay, but I say that, but now that I think about the fact that most of the movies are bad, I'm yeah. like, well... Nobody's seen yeah, them, yeah. but nobody's most seen them. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Nobody's seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, and all the it, other ones are bad, I, so... It, like, it curls my heart up a little bit. But yeah, um, but everybody's familiar with Halloween. Yeah, everyone. Um, yeah, I guess I, that is my criticism. Uh, I was bored. Um, I was not engaged. I thought everything in this movie had been done better before I sat there going like, and by the end of it, and this wasn't, it was, it's not just me, I guess. Cause I thought like, I'm going to be on the fucking outside of this going like that. This movie's boring and like, didn't entertain me at all. I had no fun watching it. There's no suspense. Uh, a friend of mine, what it was like, he's like, okay, I don't want you to tell me anything. Just tell me, would you go see it again? And I'm like, you know what? No, there's this Halloween resurrection and uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween too. I'm like, these are the three oh, the that I like. Oh. I don't need to see yeah, again. Never need to see and uh, so and then, he thinks it ranks with that. And then. he texts me Woof. back later and he's like, "But you didn't tell me it was fucking boring." And I'm like, "Oh shit, okay." <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. So uh, yeah, I I don't think you need to see Halloween 2018. I thought it sucked to be honest with you. Uh, and like yeah, I, oh, I guess, right. I probably, that's where I'm going to be. Well, I know that, you know, Mikhail and Sean are like really into this. I was actually sitting there going like, Sean didn't like this fucking movie. And he comes in tonight and he's like, well, I saw it again and it got better. I'm like, aha, I knew he didn't fucking like it the first time around. <laughs> oh, yeah. But Michaela, she is sold hundred percent. This is my guest. Holly could go Colin, either way. The, Colin, what's your ranking of the franchise? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had I'm to write curious. it down. I, no, I wrote mine down, too. I'm, I'm going to go curious. from memory. So I was actually going to be like, make a bold horror statement and say that maybe <laughs> I like Halloween 2 better than the first I think that's one. valid. My my biggest criticism about 2 is like, it just doesn't have the atmosphere one has. But that's, but I mean, that's a minor criticism. To me, so. Halloween 2 has more of like a Halloween atmosphere. It's like the, yeah. the credit sequence is better. That it's not all the, green trees in California. It, it, yeah, yeah, it feels like it's Halloween night. Halloween night's happening. But there's so many problems with it. And the, like, again, the best version is a hybrid of the TV cut. And the, you know, yeah. so I guess I'm going to say yeah. Halloween is number one. Halloween 2 completes the set. Uh, Halloween four. If you're going to bring them back 10 years later, that's how you do it. And that's how you end it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. I was like, you know what? You're going to remake it. I was entertained. I'm surprised you have that that high. I did not expect that from you. Because I agree. But but after this movie, this is the thing. Like this movie (laughs) recontextualized so many of these on this list. I was like, you know what? I was actually interested in Rob Zombie's Halloween as I was watching it. It engaged me uh, more than this did. And so then, then I came to like, well, what's my next one on this list? And to be honest with you, is it a race to the bottom after this? It's a race to the bottom. I'm like, after that, That's how there's, my list a goes fucking, too. there's a gap. Yep. As we <laughs> right. descend and free fall in black space yep. for a while. Once you get past like the first one. four spots, it's all race to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. And so then, okay, I guess I put on here. So we're going to go with, uh, <sighs> Five. You're gonna say five. No one's you? gonna hold you to this, Colin. So yeah. it's fine. Yeah. No, but I know. But I'm. I'm, I'm like, following along on my list to see how they. <laughs> yeah. So am I. To see how they I'm just gonna say that I hate myself for this, but I would put H2O probably there. Mm-hmm. And Number then, five? yeah. And then I would say this one, Halloween 2018. Then I would say Halloween five, what? Rob Zombie's oh Halloween God. two, <laughs> Halloween Resurrection, and Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers. That's. You didn't oh, okay. rank three in there? Three's not in there? What are you talking three's about? Three's not in there? Oh, three. shut up. There is no three. There's uh, a movie called Season of the Witch. It's not a Halloween movie. Colin, it's high five. I'm having number six at the bottom. You and I agree on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the worst. Because it's <laughs> it it's badly made. Yep. I think in not only are all of its characters awful, its motivations are shit, and in the whole cult of thorn crap. Uh, Everything about it makes no sense. It's just, it's a badly made, ugly movie. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's why I kind of, even though five has so many problems, it's watchable, though. It's watchable and it has an atmosphere. <laughs> and when it gets going at the end, it actually kind of sort of works. I agree. I agree. Highlights 100% that Colin. number on my list. Yeah. <laughs> number, number six. 
highlights it where it's at. <laughs> oh, <laughs> number two on Sean's list. Okay, all right. So here we go. Where are we going with the? Are we jumping to Holly? Are we going Holly, straight? To- yeah, I can go next. All right. That's fine. Because uh, I'll probably just go lay down on the couch during these two because they're going to mm-hmm. take a fucking long time. Yeah. <laughs> you, you think that, but mine's going to be real. Colin, yeah. you say that as you have two pages of notes in your hand, Sean. Yeah. No, no, no. We, no, I was looking you, for He has a we, legal no, pad in I his do. hand right now. I have two now. pages, but you know what? We covered it. Yeah. We said everything yeah. I wanted to say. No. Mine yeah, is all my notes are covered too, actually. Real quick. real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to take very long either. Um, you know, I... Here's the thing. Like I said earlier, like I'm a fan of the Halloween movies. I don't know every detail of the movies. Um, so I can go into this kind of understanding what they did with the new movie. Um, because if you're, if you're gonna, if you're gonna say that you have a history with these movies and it's kind of like, it's personal that they, they changed all this shit. It's like writing under- a new chapter to the Bible. I, I understand that. <laughs> Which they did. It's called the New Testament. <laughs> yeah, it's true. they yeah. did that. They yeah. did. All right, we need the Bible three. Sorry, sorry. Um, Bible three. So it's I, like Hamlet I, two. I totally under understand that that mindset, um, and I understand that it, it feels kind of personal. But me coming into, it, I'm like, I don't really care if they change some of the other movies because I, I don't take it as personally. Like, I like uh, some of the Halloween movies. I don't like a lot of them. Um, so for them to come with this this new this new movie and kind of take like the greatest hits. It didn't really bother me. It kind of took some of the elements that I like about the other movies and I was okay with that. And I I agree that there were some parts that were a little slow, a little hard to get into, but I was not bored. I I was fairly entertained with the whole movie. There was some things I really enjoyed about it. Um, There was things that I didn't particularly care for, but again, not really personal for me. So I actually enjoyed it. Um, if I was a super fan, I would understand why you'd have a problem with it. But as someone who just likes it and I can come into this and say, you know what? It's just kind of a fun Halloween movie and I'll take it. Um, I love Jamie Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis coming back. You know, I, I get the the nostalgia part of it. I it, it worked for me kind of like when, you know, Force Awakens came out and we get those those feels again. You know, it's still there. There's a lot of new things that may not add up for for super fans but for me it's okay it's and totally the force awakens it is franchise. thank you right it's it is it's exactly what it is it is exactly and i like the force awakens so like so do i yeah yeah, yeah i love so the like, force awakens it so. kind of works for me um i'm okay with it i thought it was kind of a fun movie um yeah i th- yeah i'm good with it do, I, do i'll you have I'll your rec- rankings i'll recommend halloween 2018 and where it falls on my list, I, I did my list backwards, ten to one. Oh, that's fine. So I'm starting at the end and going okay. going down. Six oh, Resurrection, Rob Zombie two, three, five, H two O, Rob Zombie four, 2018, two, and original. All right. Okay. Well, that was very that was similar. Almost, that was almost too fast. And first, and you. But I was like, no, no, no. The, the three that count are in the top in the, four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because like it's like we were saying, once you get past like yeah. slot number four, it yeah, kind of yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. And and we said we're not getting into detail, so I'm just yeah That's done. Really yeah. So, there you and go. It really is top four, but, and then whatever else is after yeah, that. So, so yeah, I was gonna say so so far though, two of you have number six in your last place, and I I am digging that. Fuck so. six. Yeah. <laughs> Oh wait, wait, wait! The producers cut or the upset. Oh, it doesn't well, matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. No, it doesn't change it. They uh, both. They're suck. both terrible. I think the theatrical cut is better than the producers. I cut, do too, but they're still both but terrible. That doesn't, doesn't matter. say anything for yeah. the theatrical cut. So either way, they're still number ten. Yeah. All right, or eleven now. Let's now the big point. question: Who, flip who a goes coin. next? Sean, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'll go next because I think mine's gonna be shorter. Go ahead, Sean. And, and uh, Michaela is sitting in the bartender seat. Yeah, right? yeah. So she I explained like, it before you it got here. It feels like she should be capping it off. She's like, "This is my night, damn it!" <laughs> um, I'm, I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> yes. She is. She's oh, got ooh. tattoos of Michael shirt. Myers. She has shirt. the fucking posted, shirt on. That is a good shirt. Have yeah. we posted yeah. a picture of your tattoo? I was just gonna say, have we shown? We should post a picture. No, we should post a picture yeah. of your tattoo yeah. for like the leading up to yeah. the release of this episode. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and regurgitate like everything we've talked about for the last hour and a half because you can just go back and listen to the last hour and a sure. half. So I will say that um, uh, my biggest problem with this movie is that I don't like any of these characters. There's nobody who's everyone's just not having a good time in this movie. There's that fucking kid, Sean. I that mean, fucking the, okay, kid's having uh, a good sorry. time. The kid, Vicky. 
are like they're great. They're, they're like you didn't feel anything with Allison. <sighs> she I liked ends up, her. She ends up being not. Uh, but again, they're just all just fucking. Everything is happening to these people, and I get that's where the movie's coming from. But I don't. I don't necessarily like Allison. Maybe I understand like what's going on with her, but I don't. And she's also not in the movie enough or doing it enough of anything for me to like her. I don't like any of these characters. None of them are having a good time. There's no, I don't understand. There's no happiness represented for me to understand what like the opposite of what they're going through is to make me feel anything. It's just like, oh, this is uh, an occurrence that's happening to them that this seems normal. Like that they're all just fucking depressed people yeah. having bad days. And I mean, maybe that's it. But I, I just I don't like any of these characters. I don't think the writing is terribly good for this movie. Um, there's some very contrived things that fucking new Loomis yeah, fuck that. that was bad. Bewilders that. me to no end, and I, yeah. I no no viewing will get that out of my head. Um, the, I was hoping you would say on a second viewing it's better, but no, <laughs> I was on, really on, hoping on, no, to hear that. On from no you. viewing will that be better. <laughs> no, I agree um, with that. There are uh, the I think the teenagers are not like it's it's a tired storyline. It's like oh yeah, he ends up his boyfriend ends up being an asshole. We were discussing it. I, it was I think it was off mic at this point. Which is like remember the time in these movies where they like everyone was just friends. Remember when you just had guy friends and girlfriends yeah. and which is realistic. That does happen. I was like to have life. guys and I was like, hi, four of us whole table right, right, right now is evidence not, of that. Just to not have any yeah. like any feeling beyond right. it. was like hey, we're friends. It's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Like, remember when they used to do that in movies and you didn't have to deal with some bullshit? That's not disregarding, like, everything that women have to go through with guys and sure, you know, all this stuff. Right, but just, yeah. like, people are friends. Yeah. And it can happen. So I think they're underwritten. My biggest problems with this movie, I think, are, like, the script, which I don't think is too strong, um, and the editing, which I think is, like, if you're if you're not building that on top of a good script, I think your editing is just... Um, poor as well and I think they like we said earlier it doesn't breathe it doesn't let moments happen it just kind of rushes to situations you get Lori in one scene and then she's immediately outside of the fucking gas station watching them load up bodies and shit like everything happens too quickly in this movie um oh Jesus <sighs> the score I like but again that might also be just its own separate entity like we discussed um, it works better on its own, um, but there's some really good score stuff in this movie yeah, that there I is. really liked yeah. and I wanted more of. We talked about that theme, which I'm like, just give me that throughout like you the know, whole we, thing. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. And I think it works really well. Um, it sounded like a goblin score. It sounded like an Italian uh, right, horror yeah, movie yeah. score. Yeah. yeah. See, the I, shape. I thought it sounded Allison. like when people yeah. knock off John Carpenter is what right. I thought it sounded like. <laughs> like <laughs> you know how people try to like he imitate is, him. He's basically knocking off himself. Yeah, like I was That's like, this sounds this like movie. someone trying to imitate him. Right, but he does some, that fucking, the shape chasing Allison, oh, I want more of that. That is great. I just want to go listen to that. Maybe and, I'll find it before you're done with your thing. I think you should because it does some really good stuff in that. Um, like I said, New Loomis is bullshit. Um, I think that's the best way to sum it up. New, yeah, and that's how I wrote it in here. New Loomis is some old bullshit. I don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's listen to this for a second. Okay. Yeah, Love that, right? yeah. Yeah. that Love makes me want to go see him in concert. That like made, that alone, I'm that like, dope. let's go to that. I was yeah. sitting next to my sister when this came up in the movie. Yeah, and she was like, she started squirming. When this scene came on, because oh, the music got the all percussion. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yep, dope. That's I like good. That. That's so my favorite good. part of that. Love that. And it's a minute long. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it comes up it again. It should have gave, you know, like he used to go on for like 10 minutes. Right. And it would like, there'd be layers and layers right. of stuff. It would quiet down. And that's what's different about in. this. Yeah. It's like his score doesn't do, I mean, granted. It's like he came in for a day of work and were, he called it. There are I think, a lot of scenes I think with no kids score. Had more, the kids had more to do with I it. I think so too. Yeah. He was giving them Cody an opportunity. Right. Because I see them even a little behind the scenes stuff they show for this movie i see them doing more of like right. the actual yeah. work and he's giving more of it to them to do there were so many scenes with no score at all though that yeah was, that, that's what was weird yeah um also like we talked about like on the first viewing now like i said it does get better um it's something get better in the second viewing that doesn't make it good or great um but the, from, like i said my first reaction to watching this was like was i bored was this boring to sit here and watch all this stuff and i really think it was because there were moments that were it's just 
uh, certain things I'm just like, all right, I get it. I also know, I don't know, I don't think you're going to kill Lori. I mean, there's a certain, they we, they want us to dismiss a whole bunch of things, but there's also certain things we're going into this movie knowing that it's like they're not going to do it. They're not going to kill Lori. And by the time we got to the end of the movie, we're just like, well, they're obviously not going to kill Michael Myers because this is a franchise. And we got to mm-hmm. get some fucking money out of this. Mm-hmm. And we're not just going to make a movie and see what happens. We're going to make a movie to make more movies. That's a big problem I have with this. But that's been every Halloween movie yep. ever. Right. But I also went through and because I thought about that, because obviously when you're making stuff like this, you want to make more money or you want to do more. You want to make this. But there's also and now you forced me to go to my list. <laughs> um, I looked at the endings of all the movies to see like how I felt about them and whether it felt more like they're going for to make a sequel mm-hmm. or if they were going or if they made their movie mm-hmm. and it happened. But it doesn't to leave matter. It because it doesn't matter what the ending of the previous movie is, they'll make a sequel if they want That's to. That's true, because they'll it find does a way. Not matter. Because they cut Michael's fucking look head off. Look what they off. did. It, yeah, in Resurrection, look what they uh, did. And yeah. that's the yeah. end. Back. It does Oof. not matter no, what but the ending in, is. When they'll all make those a sequel other, if they want. When all those other movies were coming out, it was kind of a, a just a given during that era that like a movie would have this kind of tacked on ending, which opened the door to another uh, yeah. movie, even no matter how ridiculous it was. Yeah. So I think as a viewer at that time, I was just used to like, you I had your movie yeah. and the movie ends they put him down the well and it's over yeah. and then there's this and stupid tacked on right. ending where like she's actually the you know so it's like okay if they want to continue it they can do something and if they don't it's over I, at least I still got right. the ending within this movie sure I uh, I don't feel like I got that because I feel like they would uh, like we discussed I feel like they would have stayed and made sure he was dead like I feel like the those- house was burning down <sighs> All right, fine. If they want it, then that makes them stupid characters for having uh, this much trauma for 40 years to not make sure he's dead. Okay, but in their timeline, like, the only thing that's happened was the first event. Sure. They don't know that he can live through a fire because that's, that's never happened true. in their timeline. That is a good point. So Michaela. why wouldn't they believe he died in a fire? If they if they literally oh, see him on him. fire, why wouldn't they believe <laughs> he's dead? All right, fine. I'll We're literally uh, roast him. We're literally. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, all right. High fives all around yeah. to all of this. Uh, you both make very no. good points. <laughs> Um, oh God! Score the editing was I think shit in this movie. Like I said, I, in, in the, everything needed more time to breathe, and there were moments where you could cut more stuff out. Uh, um, I absolutely love Karen's moment, her gotcha moment. God, it is that literally was great. a gotcha moment. That's and, wonderful. Uh, a lesser actress could not have sold it. She did it very well. It uh, I feel like I've seen that in several. Mo- like I, I expected her to do it. Uh, you know, that was the moment I was like, you know, but, and she I, did you know, it. Was like, uh, oh, yep. see, I bought it because, uh, I because bought it that too, actor was that character was so weak up until yeah. That. But uh, that's yeah. I think is so as well. And She's serious- portrayed as that, and then have her come back from that because she got me. And when the gotcha came, I was like, oh shit. Uh, I, was not I, I thought it was laid in like that, you know, because of that was her arc. It was like they were sure. building in that she had all this uh, right. training and all yeah, that. That's the it. payoff, I guess. Right. I, whatever. But I mean, but it, it I think makes sense. Yeah, that I makes agree. Sense. Yeah. But I think it worked. It worked for, for me. Anyway. It worked. Like I, the payoff, maybe it is built in, but it worked for me. So I did like that very much. Again, no matter what you say about how she was used throughout the rest of the movie, yeah, she at least gets to that moment, which I liked very much. Uh, I would definitely get my phone out of the pudding. I don't know what the hell was going on there. Uh, <laughs> Pudding's think, not going to stop showing. No, put it, you I'm guys got to throw fucking, an actual I, punch or all, something. We all live with our fucking phones. How are you just you know going to leave it behind? They're in but, high school. Throw it in the bottom of the pool, right? Something it's something else. Yeah. I'd still was, go get it. No, it was yeah, I mean, it was yeah, right. things yeah. worth six hundred fucking, right. fucking dollars. Right. It okay. was the fucking but, principle. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, if it's at the bottom of like a nine foot pool, it's probably not going to work. Is my point, sure. right? Like putting it might still work. But like There's insurance claims and all that stuff. Don't you have insurance on your phone? Yeah, like, but like you're not going to drop it. Maybe yeah, your time. family's rich. Yes, but at the, you're within the time frame of this movie. You're still not going to be able to get it fixed. This is all like right, what right. one very, day. Very yeah, true. and that's so the point. Right? That's Plus, what I'm saying. Like, like, but it's still like. Plus, you know, she has three thousand dollars now. So. Yeah. Oh, that's very yeah, true. That's true. <laughs> she can just go buy another phone. Yeah, just buy another phone. Um, it's fine. So I mean, uh, I'm not. <sighs> Again, there's some other good moments. There's one shot of Michael that I really loved, and it, it, uh, I don't know why. Was it by the cop car? No, it's when, uh, after he get, gets a part of his hand blown off, and everyone's in the basement, and he's just walking around the house. Oh. And so he walks around the corner, and the windows are blown out behind him, and then you hear, it cuts back to him, and you hear a, like a good guitar riff. It starts at his feet and goes up, and his mask is almost like black at oh, that okay. point. Just, it's one 
like throwaway shot of him, but it's just like it looks so great, and that's it kind of encompassed everything I wanted from it mm-hmm. that I thought was really good. So there are a few moments in this, um, but they also miss a lot of opportunities for moments between sure. these characters that I think like whatever you think of those movies or not, I think are pulled off better in the other movies that they want us to forget, Mm -hmm. which then I cannot forget because they keep going back to them. So there's that. So would I recommend this movie? Um, And like Colin said, it's like, would I want to watch this again? You already did you twice, did. man. I did. Well, yeah, twice. I had to. I, I kind of, yeah, I had you to do the second time. Are you going to be there first day well, that's very true. I got yelled at. I got yelled video. at for watching it the first time without my family. Like, I got <laughs> yelled at by my family for watching this without them. Yeah. <sighs> Would I watch it again? Uh, I just feel like if it wasn't a Halloween movie, we wouldn't be so picky. But it is a Halloween movie, so we, ha- that's, but, but that's the, that's what the filmmakers take on. When you know they're making this shit, maybe it is a better well, movie. And it's the not reason Halloween. they wanted to make this because they were fans, right? So but yeah. maybe it is a better movie. It's not a Halloween movie. That's not my fault. They yeah. made a Halloween movie. If well, they wanted to yeah. make this and make it a different movie, then they should have gone and, and done it. They wanted to make it because they were Halloween fans. Right. So they wanted to make a Halloween. It's not movie. my fault they yeah. made the Halloween movie, and you know we can say what we want if it wasn't a Halloween movie, but mm-hmm. that's what they made it. Um. So uh, I remember when I said I wouldn't go on long, and I lied. Um. Do you want to see it again? <sighs> And then your ranking? Uh, no, not really. No, I, I can't. Write. It's and, and this is it's very hard to. I'll just say I won't recommend it. It's hard to say that to Halloween fans because they're gonna see it. Yeah, you're gonna see they're it. They're gonna see it. Like you're gonna be like me. You're gonna yeah. see it. So I mean, but but I also think it's weird to the regular horror audience. They might really like this movie because they're not as invested in the Halloween mm-hmm. franchise. That's what I'm getting the, today right. at work. It was like the people who had the less exposure yeah. to Halloween movies will liked like it more. this movie, mm-hmm. I think. So, like, <clears throat> I, I think no matter what, people are going to go see this movie and yeah. they're going to make their money. It's going to yeah. break $100 million this week. I'm mm-hmm. calling it right now. Yeah, it's going to break. Probably. A, like it's as I'm a, going lower. I'm going like 80. No, I'm going. Yeah, they 80, said 70, 80, but it's as, usually. As I'll of, say 75. I was going to say, as of right now, when we're recording, um, it's projected 70. 75. Um, however, a few days ago, it was only projected like 40 to 50. Yeah. Um, if it can do 100 million its opening weekend, Halloween with its 40 years of history and it character, sh- right? it's going it to do 100 should, right? million. But it may have a bunch of people saying it sucks. I don't know. It's it was like that. across okay, the board. But that like, drop off doesn't usually yeah, affect the, the box week. office until yeah. the second week. Right. So I think my I theater think was pretty break full. Up. Mine wasn't. Mine, I was concerned. Mine, by was, my yeah. mine was pretty full. Same. There might have been like 20 people in my whole theater. Oh, wow. I was really worried. Actually. But also you saw it on Thursday, right? Yeah, at 940. Yeah, yeah, mine was empty. Too. I, but saw, on Friday I night, saw it Thursday at 7 o'clock. My yeah. theater was like 80% full. Yeah, but that's 7 o'clock versus yeah, 940. 940 was like everybody's got to get up for work the next day. Friday night at 715, mine was packed. Yeah. So I think that is the attitude that people are going to it can do a hundred million. I don't Halloween right. can Halloween do a hundred million. Do a hundred well. million, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so there's that. Uh, so what's your ranking? Uh, uh, Here they go. Uh, Slow enough that we can process. Yeah, it. I was gonna say. We're Sorry, gonna do you want Holly. me to do mine again? I kind of do, and in the right order. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Like from one to ten. What, yeah, do you want me to redo mine? Well, hold on. You gotta wait. <laughs> now, okay. Because we're all into me. Um, it's all about me right now. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. All right, so uh, one is obviously number one. Um, two and three switches back and forth for me, but as of right now, it's number two is part four. Number three is part two. And again, those two switch for me. Number four is H2O. Keep going. Number five. (laughs) I had it written down differently. Number five is. Number five is part five. Number six is this one. Number seven is part six. What? (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Uh, number eight is Rob Zombie's Halloween. Although I will say that movie just keeps sinking lower and lower for me. Uh, number nine is part three. Number 10 is resurrection. And number 11 is Rob Zombie's Halloween two. So H2O and six park a little higher than it right now. I guess so. Place. Yeah. But yeah. I, uh, I have a, I have an affinity for H2O. Especially after seeing this movie, I think it does a few moments better. So that's it, what I'm I think, saying. I like, think watching it made this movie me appreciate it, it more, yeah, yeah than yeah. I had previously. So it moved up because of this movie. So All right, Holly. So, uh, you want me to redo mine? The slow version for <laughs> slow people. From one, from, from one to oh, is it eleven. 
11. From yeah. 1 to yeah, 11? Yeah, we're at 11 yeah, now. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Unless you're brave and bold like myself. Yeah, Colin did great. Colin did great. You should read <laughs> Okay. Um, original to this one, 2018, for Rob Zombie's Halloween, H2O, 5, 3, Rob Zombie H2, Resurrection, and 6. That's almost my list. Yeah, I know. You were yeah. saying it's, it's very good. Yeah. It's very similar. It's very so similar. Very yeah. Close. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Michaela, it is down to you. All right. I loved this movie. I had a great time mm-hmm. watching it. it what was, is wrong with you? Uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just joking. What is wrong with you is I had completely different expectations than you did yeah, is what it is. It's all about your expectations. Like I said, I was, I'm, I'm still really angry about the trailer situation, especially since I'm constantly every commercial break on TV seeing the TV spot with the cheerleaders in the parade singing the like head and field chant. Mm-hmm. Like still right now, I'm still seeing that like every commercial break that makes me very angry because I, I was really concerned. I mean, I, we all agree that we, none of us liked Rogue One, but like, the thing that also made us really mad about Rogue One was that the trailer straight applied to us. Like there was scenes in that movie that we, or scenes in that trailer that never showed up in that movie. And yeah, when you have a face off with the Tie Fighter and then you don't, or you have a Felicity Jones in like Imperial armor and then that, that never happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like and granted, the scenes that they left out are not as um, impactful as those would have been in Rogue or, One, or maybe um, had a, just a slightly different version of it, like right. a relocation of the same thing, but just in a different part but, of the house. And that's what, like that. That, but that annoys me almost more. Yeah. That like, why show us the same scene in a different location? Why not just show us the actual scene? Um, at the same time, even though we saw all these scenes in the trailer that n- that never end up in the movie, I still feel like I saw too much in the trailer. Way too much. Uh, mm-hmm. It showed way too much. Um, I, I mean. Agree. There was no stopping Sean and I from watching those trailers yeah, a million times. That's, that's, I mean, so that's maybe that's our own our fault. Own. Yeah. Um, I yep. So. I can, we can't blame you. <laughs> yeah. I, I have no one else to blame. So I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to go see this movie anyway, so right. you got to like yeah. limit yeah, your I get, exposure yeah. to but, it. No one else to blame. But when it comes to like, I mean, and I, I went back through my Instagram because I knew I had kind of like reposted some stuff from people that were on the set. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was a parade at some point in this movie. I've seen behind the scenes photos of it. It's in, the, it's in that fucking TV spot. Like, and... Maybe it wasn't important enough to keep in the movie, but then why are you using it to advertise? Like, I just, I, I don't understand the disconnect between the final product and the marketing side of it. And, you know, I, I know there was it's, reshoots. It's, well, yeah, it's just early shit. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's the thing like I said, reshoot, but it's just early shit. It's like, they thought that was going to be the movie. Right. And then you get down to editing and there's a whole restructuring and there's mm-hmm. just shit that's to them. It's got to go. But I thought I was going to see Laurie Strode stab Michael Myers with the butcher knife in her fucking front yard in this movie. And it never happened. And I was waiting this whole movie for that to happen. And it never did. And like, granted, the whole third act is like, for me, was really intense and really stressful to watch. And like my worst fucking nightmare of a home invasion. But yeah, so that I, I was really hung up on like these scenes I was expecting to see in the movie that I didn't see. Which once again, it, it, you know, it is my own fault, but it also isn't because they still put that out there. Right. Like they still put that out there for me to consume and like set my expectations that way. But it was also my choice to watch it like 20 times. That's very you know, like That's also why it's nice to have the second viewing. Mm-hmm. Just like, all right, I've cleared out the shit I expected. Let's watch it for what they're giving me. I can't wait to do a second viewing. I really can't. Yeah. Um, I think that it'll be um, easier to digest. In a second viewing, I do agree the fucking psychiatrist shit was terrible. Bullshit. That actor was terrible. He was very mustache twirling, like <sighs> obviously a bad guy from the jump. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just like it, there's no reason for that character to exist in this movie at all. You could have completely eliminated him and it wouldn't have made a difference. However, like this movie is my infinity war. Like this is what I, I have looked forward to mm-hmm. for years to hope to see happen. Right. Yeah. Cause in my lifetime, I have seen two Halloween movies in theaters and that is Rob Zombie's Halloween and Rob Zombie's Halloween two. Uh, like I was 17 when the first one came out and skipped school to go see it. And you know, like that, that's all I have. So if that's all I have, this is like the best I'm ever going to get. <laughs> and I was, I could not have been happier to see this in the movie, just being able to see familiar title sequences and credits and music and um, familiar actors again. And uh, I mean, it's not very often you get to see any movie period with uh, a woman of Jamie Lee Curtis's age being a protagonist, Mm -hmm. let alone being a protagonist in a position of power um, that has dimension and is overcoming a trauma. And then you, not only that, you have three generations of this family that are all women that are working together for a common goal, whether they want to, or they're forced into that. Um, it's it, to me, that's my Avengers, right? Like the yeah. whole, like all the strodes coming together to fight Michael Myers is like my version of that. And like, to be honest, like horror is, is much more 
friendly to empowering women than most comic book movies are. And it's well, yeah. An, yeah. yeah. And it's that's an, the thing. Like, this whole movement, I'm like, I've been watching horror movies my entire exactly. fucking life, and that's right. what they are about. Exactly. There's Ripley, there's Sarah Connor. Well, it's there's just, a, there's, but yeah. You can go on. You oh, can yeah, go on yeah, for yeah. forever about that. Yeah. And that's what, and like, I like that, that's like. It's the inferior genre. It doesn't matter. It's a horror. It's somehow lesser, Colin. Right. Mm. Right. It, yeah, exactly. That's changing. Is, Let's well, elevate uh, horror. Is, I'm like, it's yeah. always been elevated, yeah. you fucking bastard. Right. But. Just yeah. pay attention. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just pay attention. Just don't dismiss it. it. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Just pay attention that mind, to it. That mindset is starting to change. And like, you know, you I didn't see it, but you guys were telling me that you saw Captain Marvel in front of like Halloween for some of the trailers. I didn't have Did it in front of mine. Really? Captain yeah. Marvel? Oh, was Colin fine. had it in front of I didn't his. have that. I didn't have that. No. Um that bothers me on a number of levels because like Marvel's way too late to that for me um but you know whereas halloween's been doing this is a character I've, that has existed longer than i have that i get to see at the end of her story that's crazy to me like i never thought that would ever happen so uh it is i do agree sean that it is unfortunate they didn't just like stick the landing and instead we're like we can establish another franchise and i guarantee you in like three weeks from now we're going to hear that friday the 13th whatever had, the rights have shook it out and it's going to be greenlit you know well, because well, that lawsuit's going to go on for a while but i get what you're saying but yeah. I, I guess what i'm saying is like some horror franchise is going to make a cash grab but like halloween was successful so let's get they back into heather landing camp and robert england coming back <laughs> yeah. at it again oh yeah, yeah that's what it's going to be um but yeah, I mean, we've kind of talked about a lot of the problems at length with this movie. Uh, I overall, I really enjoyed it. I had a great time watching it. I can't mm-hmm. wait to see it a second time. I would definitely recommend it. And for my yeah. rankings. Oh, yeah, all right. right. Number uh, one. Number one, uh, the original Halloween 1978. Safe bet. Yeah. Number two, <laughs> Halloween 2018. Yeah. Okay. No, I wrestled yeah. between it, two and this one. Yeah. Number three is Halloween 2. Number four, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Yeah. Number five is Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. <laughs> <laughs> Shock! Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. number that six. actually does improve if you watch it. It yeah. does. It's. Yeah. I guarantee you, there will be think pieces within like two or three oh, yeah. years. It was the yeah. first yeah. one to go with the PTSD. Yep. Laurie Strode. Well, yes, sure. it was. Can I ask, um, theatrical or unrated? Uh, th- oh no, thank you because I wrote this down. and I forgot to say it. Theatrical. Thank you. Theatrical I for like... both Rob Zombies. Honestly, okay. Because, because do not watch the unrated PSA. Do I not don't... watch them. Right. I, They're I, terrible. Right. I recently went back and. I'm not going to invade mm-hmm. on your thing for it. No. But the, uh, oh, I'm glad you reminded me because we had right. this discussion off yeah, mic. No, uh, the unrated version of the part first, two oh. of Rob Zombie's two, mm-hmm. uh, I absolutely despise. The theatrical cut, uh, I'm okay towards or yeah. indifferent towards. Like it yeah. is, it it's is a, big a difference. superior. It is a better movie. It's a big difference. Yeah, just like um with original the original Rob Zombie one, the first one, um the second the unrated version has a very unnecessary rape scene that does mm-hmm. nothing for the plot. Hey, um, don't need that. It's there because he can do it. And that's it. So ju- theatrical for all Rob Zombie stuff is yeah, a good. It's a weird thing to have to take a rape scene to try and turn your to Michael Myers into a good guy. Yeah, because that's basically what the scene's doing. Yeah, like he's st- he's killing them. Not maybe because of the rape because they're the in woman, his room, but because they're in his room. But it does that. And they're touching it's his masks. Two weird things together. Just like you shouldn't associate these two things. Exactly. But I, I digress. It's exactly. not a good scene. No, I agree. I'm glad you and reminded me of that. And the reshoot so. brings back all the primary cast of the Devil's Rejects. It does. Oh, yeah. Because that's the the cops. Yeah, that, that was the better yeah. version. Yeah. But I I don't fucking have that version. It drives right. Me you nuts. have to yeah. find that DVD somewhere, yeah. and it's only when, on DVD. When I uh when I. So I own both Rob Zombie ones. I had to specifically order the theatrical versions yeah. when I got them. So yeah. that's how I have them. But um, number five, yeah, number five, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Number six is H2O. Uh, number seven is Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, number eight is Halloween 5. Number nine is Resurrection. Number 10 is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. And number 11 is Halloween 6. Mm. Nobody likes the Halloween Oh, it's terrible. It's a fucking awful piece yeah. of shit movie. Yes. It yeah. killed. Unwatchable. That is the last one in series continuity. It was so bad yep. that they uh, just abandoned it. Yep. Well, it's also uh, uh, Mustafa Akkad, mm-hmm. who's the great grandfather of the yes. Halloween series, uh, was killed in a terrorist bombing yes. in like Beirut or something mm-hmm. like that yeah. uh, after that movie. So Malik Akkad, which I believe is his son. Yep. Yes. So what do we do after this? You know, this is the time that we just cut that off and. Do something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> this new movie was dedicated to him. Did you see that? I saw yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that was a nice title card. I thought that was nice. Yeah, I like it. It's produced by Malik Akkad. I'm like, come on, yeah. I mean, you would really have to do it. You know, yeah. he's just cashing checks. Yeah. Well, wasn't <laughs> wasn't Mustafa technically like Mr. Halloween because he like he was attached to the most Halloween movies more than anyone? Oh, yeah, yeah, as a producer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, you know. Yeah. So we'll stop yeah. when we make twenty two. Uh, made yeah. their uh, made says. their movies. Mm-hmm. Yep. He directed a couple movies, I think. Mustafa. Mm-hmm. He directed uh, Mohammed 
the prophet of God or something like that. Yeah. Some movie, yeah, back yeah. in the seventies. Yeah. That's, Prior to Worst Halloween, game. I think. It was like <laughs> um, So the freak show is split again. Two yeah. four split two against. against. Mm-hmm. Uh in in going with what you were talking about and where your ranking is with with this and how you feel about Laurie Strode. There was a tweet the other night that I thought was very uh very great that uh Laurie Strode has the honor of being the only final girl to die and come back almost as often as the killer. Which yeah. I thought like that is yeah, pretty, pretty that's, much. A, that's a pretty that's a great testament to uh, the character. Everybody's forgetting Sigourney Weaver. To, well to I die mean, and she's come back. died she, more. I well, suppose. Yeah. No, she's only they've both died once. I mean Laurie died in in Halloween Resurrection. Resurrection. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ripley died in ha- Alien 3. Well, that's I think it's the comeback cuz she came back technically this one is a comeback. Mm-hmm. Technically? Because but technically she died in Halloween 4 off screen. Because it's right. Oh, that's yeah, true. she died. She then, was died she killed died in a car and accident. she and the faked series, her own death in H2O. Yeah. Right. And the series has went on without her but then went back to her. Mm-hmm. So that's like okay. four comebacks for her. Yeah. There you. But it so is a great there's thing. hope for yeah. you, a Sigourney Weaver. That maybe Ridley Scott will, you know, bring you back in, in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in a He's got to get over his fast bender David bullshit for that to happen. So good luck. Uh-huh. Woo! We'd all love it, but it won't happen. She was in the Alien uh, Alien uh, Isolation video game. Yep. She oh, reprised right. the role. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess uh, thanks oh. for sticking with us for yes, two plus you. hours thank for you, our you. epic. You knew. It's Halloween. You yeah. knew what it was going to be. You knew how long. And you you're going to enjoy every You knew what it. this was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what we're doing. So next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Colin. Colin, what are we watching next week? All right, listen. Episode 303 or something. Like uh, yeah. I'm sorry that uh, oh, no, you're, you're you're past Halloween at this point. We're, we're coming up on Halloween. So uh, I love Hammer movies. Michaela loves Canon movies. I love Hammer movies. We're going to watch... What I think is a good bad Hammer movie. We're going to watch Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing duke it out in the 1970s in uh, Dracula AD 1972. Oh, it's like Austin cool. Powers era. Oh, and then there's Dracula. It's not as awesome as you think. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> oh, this sounds very love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It just came out on Blu ray, which is oh, ironic. No. You uh, have it on that Blu ray? No, I have the old DVD. Uh, so that's next week Great. on the Saturday. Thanks for mentioning it was on Blu-ray. We're going to watch the worst version, the worst version of it. it I, I was checking it out. Is it it looks okay. standard definition, too? Yes. It, yeah. Well, it's on DVD. Yeah, it, it'll be fine. Don't worry. It's, uh, the movie's it'll, not like... It'll be worthy of what yeah, we're watching. Yeah, you need to see it on Blu-ray. I don't think so, but it's on Warner Archive. So if you want to get it oh, okay. uh, now, you gotcha. know, to prepare yourself for next week, then uh, Godspeed. Nice. Uh, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.